welcome to the Lions Den, everybody. Ted, boy, we got some heavy hitters in this building. I'm trying to tell you, man. And what I'm going to do, man, this is Lions Den open discussion. I'm going to let everybody go on and introduce themselves real quick. And we're going to get to the meat and potatoes. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and uh, you can go ahead and start off with uh, DeMar DeMarco. Go ahead and let everybody know who you is, your social media, and things of that nature. Go ahead, family. You got to unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. You're muted. All right, man. I'm Gucci. There you go. We hear you. Go ahead, King. Okay, cool. So, so uh, yeah, my name is DeMarco Shakur. Um, I'm from Compton, California. You know what I'm saying? I'm from the West Coast. Uh, I mean, just in a nutshell, man, you can just reach me on, you know what I'm saying, uh, Facebook at uh, DeMarco Shakur. Um, and, you know, I'm here, man, you know what I'm saying, man, to get some, you know, Get it heated, man. You know what I'm saying, man. We got some things to discuss. So, uh, yeah, man. That's why I'm in the building. So, man, I'm happy to be here, man. You know what I'm saying, man. Amongst you kings, and, and yeah, man. Let's get this work, man. I'm ready to turn it up. That's what. I, that's what I'm talking about. All right, next in line, we got balling and crawling all the way from Houston, Texas. Black Jesus Minister. Go ahead, I. All right, my okay. mic is muted for a minute there. This is your boy, Black Jesus Minister, <laughs> balling and crawling, swinging and banging, all the way from Houston, Texas. Peace. That's right. All right, all right, all right. Next in line, we got Sabio from the Dagger Squad. Go ahead, man. Introduce her. Introduce yourself to everybody, family. Peace. What up, everybody on the panel? My name Sabio. is Sabio. I'm representing Dagger Squad. Also, the Truth Squad, which is my uh, channel on Facebook, Tangible Realities Under the Hurt. As you see what my name says here, it says religion is our downfall, and I'm standing on it. Right. So I come to bring scientific and say that we need to stand on scientific literacy and economic literacy. Those are the things that will help us move forward. Not no religion, not no Jesus, or no man who ain't never came, who already died thousands of years ago. So it's time to move forward and leave that book alone. Facts. <laughs> you guys are funny characters. All right. Next, we are next in live, boy, I tell you, these guys be coming in slanging at the Bible, man. All right. Next, we got Max, Max So Real, the mighty Christian light in the building. He's a royal warrior. He goes on everybody's platform and kick ass. His uncle is Black Jesus Minister, so you know he come from a good tree. All right. What the hell? Let's go, man. So Real. So Real. It's all about timing now. I'll mute your mic, man. Come on. We're going to move to the next person, man. See, Matt, it's all about timing, man. All right. The next person we got, he's been he's been in the Lions Den for a while, brother. He's back. That's the one African night. He used to be a Hebrew. Then all of a sudden, now he's just a truth seeker. You see what I'm saying? So I respect him because he's a very uh, sharp researcher. So I'm going to go ahead and let him introduce himself to, to everybody. Go ahead. Go ahead, family. You guys got to cheat with you. Hello, hello you go. family. This is Derek Bro, also known as Ford, but in hear what everybody got to say. And, you know, I am part of uh, the Heretic team. Um, Shout out to my old Heretic crew of Greg, Kyle. And um, like I said, I'm just a truth seeker. And uh, I'm here to weigh in and listen on everybody. And eventually I'll be a judge um in some of the upcoming debates so uh and i'm from louisiana salute all right okay. all right and uh next up is the lion's den the new lion's den debate league champion armand hotel rock go ahead i'll tell everybody about yourself Peace and blessings, everyone. I'm in Hotel Bra here. Um, Lions Den champion. I represent my aunt. Um, JJ, 
the Sabio brother and the uh, Duan the Africanite, I want to request them as definitely two judges for my next debate. Uh, you're, hey, you can't be stacking the deck, man. You don't do that around here. All right. But anyway. Yeah. Let's <laughs> try to stack the deck early. You see that, y'all? All right. Now, Matt, we're going to give you one more chance to introduce yourself, brother. You're going to have to get it together. Let's go, So Real. <laughs> All right, my bad, y'all. My bad. I was trying to switch another device and it didn't work. So I apologize. Um, you know, what's up, everyone? Blessings to the panel. Um, I'm so real. Um, I'm just a Christian. Um, as usual, I never like to, I know I say a thousand times, I never like to go by the title of apologist or anything like that. Um, but that's, I'm an avid researcher. Um, and of course, uh, you know, I have a real heart and affinity for those who are professing Hebrews, you know. Um, so I constantly have dialogues with them. I do believe that, you know, a good bit of them, their hearts are de definitely like in the right place. Um, you know, it's just that I go out of my way to really dialogue with them to, you know, just kind of to just pretty much try to share the light of the truth of the gospel. You know, it's like, you really don't want anybody going a thousand miles in, in, in the wrong direction, you know, to the point where they're going after certain expectations that, you know, God himself is not even about when it comes to the new covenant. It changes a lot of things. So that, that's just really where my heart is in terms of, you know, the comedic community. I definitely know since 2006, um, I have a huge history of definitely studying that a lot, learned a whole lot, continuing to learn, you know what I mean? Just kind of like Ron. Um, but other than that, you know, I, I'm just definitely here to learn because uh, of course I don't know everything, you know, I'm still learning and building and growing myself, you know, uh, but that's just where I'm at. That's my stance and, you know, much peace, love and blessings to everybody. All right. That's man so real. The mighty Christian of life. He, I'm telling you, boy, he's a warrior. And last but not least, we got Divine Prospect, boy. Now, this guy right here is, is one of the top Hebrew scholars in the, in the community, man. He gets mad respect. He's all the way from ATL. We're going to go and let him uh, introduce himself. Go ahead, family. You got the flow. Man, you be doing a lot, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah, hey, man. man. Uh, it's yeah, part, so, of, it's part of the show, man. Go yeah, ahead. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, peace and shalom, family, man. Um, This is Divine Prospect. Kingdom Harbor Ministries, man. Um, I'm on this panel because um, Jeremiah, he wanted to get me in the ring with uh, So Real on the Lions Den. And I told him I'm already dealing with So Real on my platform, but he'd have to find another Christian apologist. And uh, during the process of him, I guess, trying to find somebody, uh, a lot of people came to the woodwork um, with certain claims and so forth. So I'm just here just to do a preliminary discussion, kind of feel the brothers out, uh, see where things go. Um, just freestyling, you know what I'm saying, and um, see what we take it from there. So I'm just grateful to be here. Shout out to my brother Jeremiah Judah and all the other panelists, man. Peace and shalom. All right, all right, all right. So we might as well just go on and get to skip the skip the uh, appetizer and get to the meat and potatoes. Let's get it on. I done heard a lot of stuff over there on Facebook, man. Some brothers been making some claims that need to be addressed. That brother right there is shaking his head right now with the with the pimp daddy shades. Go ahead and state your claim, family. I want to hear this. Right, right. Well, well, well listen, man. I, what I said basically was this. You know what I'm saying? I got a lot of Hebrews riled up. Is that the Bible, the Torah, the Tanakh, the Ketuvim, the Apocrypha, the New Testament, whatever books are associated with the Bible was not written by a black hand. And nobody on this panel can prove that these manuscripts were constructed by a black hand so that was one of uh my main arguments um that i stated that you know definitely got a lot of hebrews uh in my notification box you know who wanted to challenge me on that so um yeah man you know so if we can get into that you know get into the history of that you know, and then listen, you know what I'm saying, man, we can get it on right now, man, you know, since we can get it cracking. So that was my argument. No black hand wrote any script.
scripture or any manuscripts that we see that's associated with the Bible. That's a fact. I agree with you. I agree with you. That's interesting because you would have to know who scribed it. Do you have any profile analysis of any of the well, authors or scribes of the actual manuscripts? Is that your question? So you've done, you've um, done yeah, a profile sure. analysis. All right, so bring it out with a second resource from right. any kind of academic university so, or professor right. or scholar in the field. Right. So, um, and listen, um, Divine Prospect, man, you know for a fact that there's no original Hebrew manuscripts. There's no primary source for any signature writings from any so-called prophet in the Torah, in the Tanakh, or in the Ketuvah. There's no signature writings. They don't exist. So, but- Wait, wait, wait. But, saying they don't exist is not correct. So- That's, that, you, that's incorrect. You're talking about the data that we do have. Nobody so, says that they don't exist. Things so, are still being discovered all the time. Prospect, I've heard you on several platforms admit that we do not have these manuscripts or these signature writings. The autographs, I agree. Yeah, so we don't no. have them. So, 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 so my question to you is, how do you know for a fact that what you are reading is based on facts? You don't Can even I share have my no manuscript. Jeremiah, so... So my brother, let me ask you a question. Have you done right. textual criticism on the uh, Tanakh manuscripts? Yes or no? Yes, I have. Okay, so you have read Emmanuel. Wait, wait, so, wait, wait. So you, so you've read works by people such as Emmanuel Tov. So if you have read that, no, can you bring no, the books up so no, we can? See, oh, wait, listen, my, my brother, listen, listen, listen. Because me and you are secondary researchers, right? We're going to primary researchers and primary scholars in the field that are actually doing the work on this material. So I can give you my opinion. You can give me yours. I'm asking you to present primary sources that agree with you that says no black can't have scribed any of these sects. No, no, no scholar is going to say anything like black, white, wrote this, wrote that. They're not going to tell you that. Nobody speaks like that in academia. Right, That's a right. tattoo. Applying okay. race, so, I think it's so, a bad move. Nobody says that, so okay, we can't even so argue for against that. Divine, I want to argue, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, cool. So, Devon, this is why you're at a disadvantage. The reason why you're at a disadvantage is because you keep trying to tell people like me that this is not what the consensus of academia do. It's not about what they do because me and you also is doing the research too. What I'm right. saying is, is that you cannot present any factual information that proves that a black hand had anything to do with any writing of the manuscripts we have today the originals we do not have and we're never going to find because they do not exist and that's, that's a fact true. the they oldest wait 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 wait, wait. Cool. in order in order for for you to say that they don't exist are you saying that they've never existed is that what you're saying I'm saying that yes, absolutely. I'm saying that. So, you think, wait, wait, wait. so autograph never existed. I've never heard that before. You got to break that I'm down. I'm saying that a writing from fictional characters that's in the Bible does not exist. They are never going to find a signature writing of a. Slack, slack, slack. Takor, mute, mute your mic, family. Oh, my bad. Okay, go ahead. So the reason why I'm saying that they are, 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 are never going to find these manuscripts is because these characters that's in the Bible never existed. And so you nobody, can't so nobody, nobody in the Bible existed. That's what you're saying, correct? I'm saying that the major characters in the Bible did not exist. So no major character in the Bible existed. That's what Moses you're saying? Moses didn't exist. You can't wait, wait, I'm, 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 asking, I'm asking you a question. Are you saying that major characters in the Bible didn't exist. That's what you said, correct? I'm talking about Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the main characters. I'm not saying that nobody that's mentioned in the Bible never existed. I'm saying that the main characters that we read of in the Bible, you cannot prove that they existed. 
you cannot prove that a black hand had anything to do with the writing of the manuscripts. Now, you can correct me if I'm wrong when I say this, but no when it comes to a complete writing of the Bible, I'm not talking about fragments of different manuscripts of certain verses in the Bible. I mean, because I can go into the Silver Scrolls. I'm not dealing with that. I'm talking about a complete writing of the Torah, a complete writing of the so-called Tanakh. The oldest writing that we have in complete form would be the Septuagint, which is a Greek manuscript. Am I right? That's incorrect. We don't even have a complete Septuagint from the time that it was proposed to have been written. What do you mean so we don't have a complete set? What, 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 the, the, yeah. Septuagint, the extant manuscripts of the Septuagint that uh -huh. we have in completion didn't come about until the third century, third, fourth century. That's what we have. We don't have anything from BC period. We have scraps, like you mentioned. There's no full extent manuscripts of the Septuagint in BC period. If it is, can you please reference one? And what library is it in? No, no listen, what I'm saying is that when it comes to a, when it comes to biblical history, mm -hmm. when it comes to what we know as complete manuscripts, the oldest that we can go back to is, is the Septuagint. We don't it's have Septuagint. It, okay, so you said the Septuagint is the is the earliest we have complete manuscript, right? And and, I'm, and I'm you saying, just in general, right? You not you don't mean like Greek or Hebrew, you're just saying in general, correct? I'm saying that in general, I'm saying nothing before the Septuagint can can you show that we have and I'm not saying complete because I understand that there's missing books, so called that there's missing books, but okay. I'm saying that according to According to the letter of Aristeas, when we look at the Septuagint, I would say that that would be the earliest writing of what we know as the Old Testament. Can you show me something that predates that? In regards to completion? Not completion. I'm talking about just... Just anything you're saying, right? Yeah, th listen, I'm talking about not scraps and pieces of written manuscripts i'm talking about something that's tangible something that we can say okay so how so, we look at the so, new testament i mean how how we look at the old testament today mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'm saying can you show me something that predates the septuagint where we can say okay this this is this i can i, I can probably get a better understanding of the book of genesis or leviticus mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. the certain books that we see in the septuagint can, mm -hmm. can, can you name a manuscript that's that has a lot of the completed work that we see that's in the Septuagint. Well, we have the Dead Sea Scrolls, and there are some scrolls that have been completely preserved, and there's been some that have been in fragments. You can go to the Leon Levy website right now where they preserved it and microfiched it and look at all of them there yourselves. Reconstructions can be made based on the plethora of evidence that we have today. So there's thousands of manuscripts. This is why when you have a multitude of manuscripts and different text types family, it's easy to <clears throat> reconstruct and deduce the original. This is even done in the realm of papyrology and Egyptology studies. Did you know that we have fragments of papyrus in Egypt as well? Did people say, well, you know what? This doesn't exist. We don't have a complete form, so this is not original, and so-and-so didn't write it. I give you one that people know a lot, Ipuer, right? The Sage of Ipuer. Did you know that the copy that we have today is not the original? Yes. Does anybody, does anybody say, well, he didn't exist, he's not real, and it just, nobody makes those arguments, right? But the copy that we have is much later than the original. The original was written during the Middle Kingdom. The copy we have is in the New Kingdom. So there are methods that you use to reconstruct and deduce the original of anything. If you even look at, I'll give you an example, right? And you're probably familiar with this, the documentary hypothesis from the Wellhausen uh, of theology realm of reconstruction of textual criticism. Some of that stuff I agree with, some of that stuff I don't, but even them, and this is what's being held as one of the consensus right now in certain houses in academia, reconstructs based on all the manuscript evidence that we have to bring it back all the way to the eighth, ninth century. We, we're, able to, we're able to do that. So it's not about what you have currently, it's about being able to reconstruct it back to the point of origin. That is how the science works. 
So an argument by somebody says, well, we only have these copies today. We don't have an extent copy. Does that mean that the original did not precede what we have today? Nobody makes that argument. So well, I give you an example. I give you an example. Have proof for that. I, of course, I got proof for that. That's why I said, have you read Emmanuel Toll's work? I'm about to bring this book up here. You can read it for yourself. Can I okay. share this? Can I share I, this? I, I, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Well, no, that's you, Cam. I'm asking uh, Jeremiah. I don't know if he, if he's, if I can be allowed to share the screen. Yeah, you can. Yeah, share your screen, bro. Okay, let me, let me see if I can do that. How would I do that? Uh, oh, right here, I got it. All right, hold on. Let me bring it up on the screen. Uh, hold, hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. Uh, let me, let me just say some real quick. And thank you, uh, brother, uh, divine, for teaching his brother and telling him about the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, brother, what is your name? After you did all that talking, bro. What's your name, bro? My that's name. Marcio. Hold on, hold on, brother. Did you ever hear Scrolls, brother? Brother, hold on. Let me tell you right. how to correctly say my name. Oh, my fault. Go ahead, brother. Is, is it saying it right? It's Demarco. Demarco. Okay, okay, let me break DeMarco, that down, man. Demarco. 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 Okay, I got you, family. All right, all right. Brother, that's a Cali name right there, man. <laughs> brother Demarco. Two Demarcos from Cali, brother DeMarco. man. Brother Demarco, <laughs> yeah. have you? Have you ever heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls, dear brother? Of, co of course I heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Well then, yeah. brother, why would you sit up here, brother, and sit up here and, and challenge anybody and ask if there was anything older than the Septuagint, brother? Why would you do that, brother? Hey, let, 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 let me ask you a question, Black Jesus Minister. Can you give me a date of the oldest Dead Sea Scroll manuscript? Goddamn, dude. Yeah. Brother, excuse me for a second, brother. Let me ask you one more question. Or not well, the Dead Sea Scrolls? Bro, hold on, bro. I like to cut off. I like to cut off a lot of dumb ass. Hey, hey, listen, the, hey, hey, bro, listen, Jesus, come on, bro. Bro, let me just be real quick, real quick, and I'm done. I'm be real quick. Why you sit up here and you just said that you knew about the Dead Sea Scrolls, and you know the Dead Sea Scrolls are older than the Septuagint? Why would you challenge anybody to find any manuscripts older than the, than the Septuagint when you know the Dead Sea Scrolls are older than the Septuagint, bro? Why would you do that? Maybe okay. it was a trick question. I don't know. Okay, okay. Other I mean, can explain. Okay, cool. So can I answer the question? Because I think... Uh, I think. Yeah, that, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. I just don't want y'all over-talking each other. Okay, okay, okay. Cool, because I know yeah. you uh, muted my mic. Yeah, so, I did. The reason, the reason why I didn't bring up the Dead Sea Scrolls is because when we look at some of the manuscripts of the Dead Sea Scrolls, I believe the oldest, one of the oldest is uh, dated at, I believe, like the second century BCE. Now, if I'm wrong, then yes. somebody can correct me. But if we're looking at the Septuagint, the Septuagint, according to history or according to the letter of Aristeus, we, we we see that at 325 i believe bce so the Septuagint would predate the oldest manuscript of the dead sea scroll so is, this that, is, is that is that do we have do we have the autograph of that letter that's what i want to know from you do we uh you're talking about the letter of Aristeus? correct no 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 okay okay so cool. um but this is why i was asking black jesus minister you know what I'm saying? Because he wanted to jump out his seat. You know what I'm saying? Now he got his head knocked off because when I asked him if he can tell me a date, you know what I'm saying? He started getting his Sammy Davis tap dancing Gregory Hines on. He couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't give me a swift answer. Why? Because the oldest manuscript of the Dead Sea Scrolls is dated at, I believe, the second century BCE. The Septuagint is dated earlier than that. So have a seat, Black Jesus Minister. Man, sit back and learn. So, we have somebody <laughs> look it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the oldest scroll in the Dead Sea is like 150 okay. or something. Yeah, like so I got that. So I was like to respond. Go, so let me back, go ahead bro. and respond to what the Hold on, man. One at a time, family. Everybody going to get to respond. I promise you. Wait, wait. What I want to do, I want to do real quick while we talk. Well, while we talking, hold on. What I want to do while we talking is I want everybody. Oh, shit. Wait a minute. Wait, Wait a minute. Hold up. I didn't mean to meet nobody, Mike. All right. Go ahead. I think it's, I think it's, uh, camera froze up. Okay. Yeah, man. Let me listen yeah. to the fine, man, because that brother got a lot of information. 
Yeah. Black versus minister, you just got your head knocked off. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. You can't be you can't be coming in here messing with the elders uh, like that, man. I, I'm gonna wait my turn. I'm gonna wait my turn man. to address you, bro. Man, I'm listen, you turn. better be over there on Google, man. Why you waiting your turn, man? You, you better, you better I'm gonna wait my there. turn, bro. Hold up. Hey, Devon. Yeah, man, he froze. Man. He froze up, man. God he damn. froze. Yeah, man, he in the ice age right now. <laughs> man, black Jesus. Hey, he just sent it to the ice age, y'all. <laughs> come on back home, Devon. Hey, come on home, man. Well, we'll Brother, the chill chat. Yeah, well, well, I, 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 well, I, 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 I kind of understand. While my brother, I, while my brother uh, Ron is frozen up, I'd like to go ahead and respond it, real quick to what okay. the guys said. I'm just going to have a short everything remark up. and a question. Okay, there you yeah. go. Man, okay. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. I, All right. I'm going to right, have a short remark and a question. All right. So well, my only remark. Okay. Right? Okay. Can you show my screen while they're talking? Oh, wait, Jeremiah? Got, I just want to uh, get that. You, you got two of you on here. You know that. Now it's going to be three of you. Hold up. Well, okay. There, there go your there. screen. Wait, 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 wait. While they talk, I just want to give everybody a general reference that everybody can get access to right now while we're talking. So we can we can fact check everybody. Everybody right. can go to this website that's, right here. That's what I'm talking so, about. See, at the line there, we fact check around here. Let's get it. Deadspeakpro.org.il. This on here, you can see all the manuscripts, and they give you the timing, the dating, and they give you the nomenclature in regards to each manuscript. So you see 4Q, that's the fourth K that they found and tell you which manuscript number and the fourth K that they discovered and they tell you the dating on that. There's also been carbon dating done on almost all of these manuscripts as well. We know how far they go back and then we know that there's some, and I, and I think you're referring to biblical uh, manuscripts amongst the scrolls. I think that's what you're referring to. Though 150 BCE is not the earliest it goes back to. So I don't I don't know who made that reference, but this website right here is the Israel Antiquities Authority, which is a legit website because this is the website where they digitize the entire manuscripts. Anybody can go in there and check for themselves, and you can see the actual dating yourself. 150 BCE is inaccurate, so I don't know who said that, but everybody okay. can look at this website while we're talking. So go ahead. Okay, so that that, that, that was so, me. Okay. What's the, what's the whole is one you got showing? I'm just curious. Right. You can look on the website. For anyone that you want. Now, if you want a, a book that goes into detail for the timeline, let me pull it up for you while you're talking. We don't have to guess about these things. The references is either in a book, an article, academic article, or a website. This is the primary website for anybody that wants to look at any of the manuscripts or fragments or scrolls themselves, even the Isaiah scroll itself. It's almost a complete extent copy of the manuscript itself. So right. if we if we look Which at Isaiah that didn't write, by the way. You said what? I said, which Isaiah did not write, by the way. I mean, whether he wrote it or not, we have the record. You know how difficult it is to find autographs in antiquity? I, I, don't, I don't know how much research you've done on actual preserved manuscripts of antiquity. It's extremely difficult to find autographs. Matter of fact, the fact that we can find anything is because people make copies of it. And the normally reason empires why, control. The reason why it's hard to find divine prospect. Listen, man, you got to stop skipping through the tulips, bro. The reason why it's hard to find is because these manuscripts were so-called writ written on papyrus or was written on animal skin. When you go to ancient Kemet, brother, look at look at look at those manuscripts written in stone that you All can't. All of them are not written in stone, my brother. That's why they have right, a field called right. papyrology you're in right. Egyptology, right. and we don't even have half of the actual manuscripts of things that were written that's referenced on the walls. We don't have a lot of them. But what I'm saying, this. What I'm saying is that at least when you go to the walls of Kemet, at least you can see a lot of original writings that okay. was written by the original hand of these scribes. The reason why it's so hard to find these signature writings of these so-called biblical characters is because of what they used to write on, which is papyrus or animal skin. So this is this this is where the difficulty come in. And another question I have for you, Divine Prospect. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, well, go ahead. Ask your question. Ask your question. Okay, I'm okay, good. Um, um, uh, when it comes to the Elephantine Papyrus, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. um, my question to you is this. Why, when, when, when you read the Elephantine Papyrus, why don't they mention any, any, any major biblical character 
in the Elephantine papyrus. They don't mention anything about a Moses. They don't mention anything about an Abraham. But for They're what? I'm going to bring huh? that up too. I'm going to bring that up on the screen too. But okay, for what? Okay, cool. Because okay. listen, if, I'm, if, I, if, I'm, if I have a marriage certificate, why would I write about Moses? If I have a deed in regards to land, why would I write about Moses? Did you know that that's what most of those papyri are about? Everyday daily life stuff? Why would I write about Moses? Moses listen, has nothing to do with a land grant. He has divine, nothing to do with a marriage. Divine prospect. Once again, this is why you had a disadvantage because you're being disingenuous. Not only was the elephant team papyrus um, was about marriages and 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 also everyday uh, um, you know things that these Jews was going through while they was on an island, an elephant team. But why don't you talk about the Passover scroll? Why, why don't, so, why don't, so let's, why don't so let's, I, I've mentioned that Moses. in several lectures, my brother. We can address that. That has nothing yeah, to do with Moses. The reason why it was written was so that way they could be in unison with what was going on in Jerusalem. It was not written to be a treatise about the origin or the provenance in regards to that practice. It was written to make sure that what they were doing at Elephantine Island was in sync with the practice, the way it was being done in Jerusalem. It was not a treatise about the provenance of the practice. So why would you ask a question when that wasn't even the intent of why it was being written? Listen, the why it was being written, my brother. Listen, let, let me bring it up so we can go through it and we can see we can see the the notes from the people who actually looked at the text and who are experts in the field. See what they say about it. They'll tell you this is not about the provenance of the custom. It's just making sure that what they were doing at Elephantine Island was in sync with what was being done in Jerusalem. That's simply what it was. There's no need to mention any of these characters because they were not writing the Bible or the Tanakh or any of these things on Elephantine Island. They were not concerned with those things. That, so, that wasn't a concern of theirs. So, so divine prospect, let, let, let me ask you a question. Sure. According to the Torah, can you build a temple outside of the Holy Land? You can build a place of worship. So it won't be the central temple that you see, but you can build places where you come in, you can con congregate and come together. Yeah, that, was, that, that was that been done. Was it a temple on the island of Elephantine? That the yeah, Jews there were in? temples there. It was right next what to the island. Temple. What happened after it got knocked down? After they got knocked down, they asked for relief from the uh, Persians so that way they could rebuild it. Letter, asking, can they build a I, I just said that. <laughs> so, so but, but, but I'm saying, though, can you show me anywhere in a tour where you can build a temple of worship outside of, of the Holy Land? There's no, you're not going to see a direct prescription of that because you're talking about things that was written during a period of time where that was the purpose of them centralizing worship. There was things that they did as far as like small congregation. I'll give you an example, right? If you look into the reign of uh, Jeroboam, that's what they did in the Northern Kingdom. They were creating their own temples because they didn't want to go to the South because of political differences. This was, this was customary, this was being done. This is not nothing that is secretive. Matter of fact, Tel Arad has a place of worship there as well. Tell a rod. That's not Jerusalem. So, so if you want to look at it holistically, see the problem with people when they deal with the Bible, they don't deal with any other any other culture that same way. If I was to examine Assyria, Babylon, the Hittites, uh, if I was gonna go to the Akkadians, the Sumerians, the uh, the Hatti or Hattusa, Mari, if I was gonna <laughs> go to ancient Kemet or the Nubians, nobody says, "Hey, let's just look at the papyri to find out about the culture," and that's it. Nobody does that. When you go into Israelite culture, you have to marry that with the material culture as well. So I give you an example. Are you familiar with Boule? What are Boule inscriptions? Let, let, let us know what Boule inscriptions are. Tell no, us what no, no, I'm not familiar with that. Okay, so, uh, so uh, uh, excuse me, brother, brother Ron, uh, are you done sharing your screen or you go no, get no, back no, to uh, Yeah, yeah, I'm going to close this. I'm going to bring up everything he's referencing. I want to okay, bring up cool. a reference for everything he's saying because I want people to go back and fact check me and him. So me and him, he know. I could tell he knows what he's talking about. But what I want him to do is show references. And if he's unable to, I want to show it to the audience so they can follow what me and him is saying, right? So what I'm saying is when it comes to Israelite culture, and, and I, I just want to make sure my brother DeMarco knows, it sounds like he probably seen some of my stuff, but I don't know how much of my stuff that he's actually seen. But what I teach is holistic understanding of any ancient culture. 
the way that I deal with Israelite culture, I deal with the material and non-material culture. When you go into academia, you have the realm of humanities and arts, and you have the realm of social sciences. You don't use the same methodology to extract knowledge in both areas. It's different. You can't use the scientific method in things in regards to humanities and arts. It doesn't work that way. So you have to look at it holistically as a culture to actually see what occurred, what didn't occur, what's authentic, what is literary, and that's how it works. That's how you redevelop culture. The problem with my community sometimes is that they only hold to the text, and that's it. So what happens is you corner them and say, wait, show me what the text says. You can only build a temple in Jerusalem. Well, let me go to the actual material culture and show you they were already doing this because everybody could not travel and commute there because of several things. Number one is altitude and topography in regards to your geographical location. Everybody couldn't physically make it there. Some people were sick, some people were injured, some people were too young, some people couldn't afford to make it there in time. So they had smaller places of worship in different areas. This is when you go into the archeology span and exhume that. Abule is also a seal inscription. I have a book up, I'm gonna show in a second, where seals are used for any kind of magistrate that's officializing anything, right? You make it something official, you put your seal on it, we find scarabs, you're probably familiar with a scarab, scarab seals and boule, they all in the same category, right? This is another way for you to validate the existence of somebody as looking for a scarab, a seal or boule. Matter of fact, certain Nisut BTs were found only because we found their seals, not because right. we did anything right. about them. So what I'm saying is you cannot deal with Israelite culture just based on the literature we have today. You have to deal with a holistic, you can deal with So my Absolutely. brother, so I'm saying that only to say, when you ask about place of worship, I'm saying in the text, the prescription of the temple was being written by the Judean scribes because they had a political agenda. And a lot of this stuff was written or redacted post-exilic or after they was expelled out the land or drug out. Yeah, so now, right. uh, they, yeah, so, so, so a lot of redaction done through Ezra and Nehemiah's time where the Judeans are now coming back and resettling into the land coming from al Yahudu in the East or wherever the case may be. And now they are redacting whatever they have in order to centralize worship to where they're currently at. This is what all scholars and academics who are revisiting Second Temple Judaism, this is what they say. Now, and if you give me a second, I'm gonna bring up 20 references on the screen to show you what I'm talking about so you can go back and read them. You can email me, I'll send them to you. I have nothing to hide. Send, or we can do it send me that information. Sure. This, we can this, 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 this is why I was shocked because I see the brother just mentioned the Silver Scrolls. Now I, I, I mentioned the Silver Scrolls earlier, okay. but I know that the Silver Scrolls is was 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 only a reference, I, I, I believe, to the um, I believe to the Book of Numbers. But right. um, and and that uh, was an amulet that was placed as right, a, right, as right. A that was a player. I, I, I believe Correct. it was right. Correct. Correct. So um, yeah. So so this is so 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 this 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 is the issue that I was having with the text is that. Um, you know, we we don't we don't have any um, signature writings. Uh, I mean, you know what you know, which I'm I'm pretty sure you you've had this discussion. Yes, sir. For years now, I'll um, concede to that. I'll concede right. to that because you're right. We don't have the original manuscripts. But what scholars say is that just because we don't have it doesn't mean it won't be unearthed. I mean, it doesn't mean it didn't exist. We just don't have it right now to work with. But so that this, doesn't mean we can't reconstruct. Go ahead. All right, so 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 when we look at the Torah, right? When we look mm -hmm. at, um, you know, how 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 the consensus say that the Torah was written by the hand of Moses, it was it was written in Hebrew by the hand of Moses. When we know for a fact that Hebrew didn't exist. But my brother, where does it say that the Torah was written by Moses? The, can you show me a scripture that says the Torah was written by Moses? No, no, of course, of course, it it it, it doesn't say that in the that's Torah. Tradition. That's tradition, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. This is what I say. Let's move that out. Let's move that aside. All right. What? Here's my position, right? I deal with whatever's handed down by the culture. So I'll give you an example, right? What's a griot in West Africa? Tell me what a griot is. Oh, who? G R I O T, a griot or griot in, in West Africa. What is that? A teacher. A okay. teacher, a so person who passes down a story from, from generation to generation. There, there you go. Now, I'm going to show you a book. I wish I had it in front of me, but I have the so, digital copy. Is this an oral? Correct. Is it, is it Correct. oral tradition? So, okay. Yes. Yeah. Cool. So, a griot right. or somebody or an elder who's responsible for remembering the history, the oral tradition, and the customs right. and practices and myths tied to them for any local village. That is his role. That's his job, okay. right? So, anything that he recalls and he tells. Now, remember, there's always some truth. And the things he say, 
But in order for you to remember certain things, you have to add some form of exaggeration. You have to add some form of peril. You have to add certain literary devices so that the message could be appealing to the audience, they can retain it, and they can then pass it on as well. The objective is to unpack that, extract out what is true as far as factual, what is designed to be literary devices as teaching methods, and that which is figurative. See, the problem with people who deal with the Bible is that they deal with it from a religious perspective. I don't deal with it from that. When somebody says, well, Moses didn't exist, whether Moses existed or not, that doesn't affect anything that I teach because African cultures don't care whether an individual in an oral tradition was real or not. That is not the point of it. And what happens is with certain communities, when you have to say, this person was real, that person was real, and they were real, let's fight about with them being real, that being real, they're missing the point of the culture, why these things are being passed down. They don't even know how to parse certain elements out, see what is real, what here is legend and what was written as literary devices so you can remember what is real and what is legend that's right. how it works and that's how we have to right. deal with any culture so I, when we deal with when you use terms like inaccuracies i just need you to define oh. it the way the field of study defines it you said there's inaccuracy now, please define that you said what again no you said there's no, inaccuracy. that was interesting what he just said Oh no, go ahead. I don't know who's talking. My yeah, bad. Somebody, somebody, somebody Hold up. Can I say something real quick? Yeah, yeah, this ahead, Savio, this religion, uh, what he just said about the misinterpretation of literature is very interesting because us as a community, being a people that has been passed down information that has been rewritten and conquered and stolen and transferred and we have always been receivers of third and fourth hand information. So my Correct. question for everyone that follows this book by any means, why are you following a book that was passed down from generation to generation? Well, that well, this it's the same way. Man, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, come on, bro. That's like that's like you're not accepting oral history just passed down from generation to generation. It's just different than it's written down. Don't hey, hey, don't you say that Hey, 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 listen, but Jeremiah Judah. Hold up, hold up. See, 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 the question that I'm actually asking, the question that I'm actually asking is we realized that there have been so many changes and some of this stuff wasn't even written by the so-called writers of these books. It didn't have so, to Like be. the New Testament. Hold up. Yes, it does. Because for you to, f for, for, for me to f fully accept something as you are arguing when you just argued, <laughs> And I've been listening very well. Yes, you so have. So that's yeah. why that's why I jumped in and, and made my ask my question. So it made me think about what you said. So the whole concept is if we're going to follow something, shouldn't it be relevant and written in a time or for a time that is going to help us do something? That's my question for okay. asking. So That's the reason right. for me asking Wait, that when, question. When you say help us do something, what do you mean by that? You mean today? Yes. So you're saying, <laughs> so wait, so you're saying that if we use anything from Israelite culture, it cannot help us with nothing today? Is that what you're saying? Is it's null in assisting us with doing anything today? That's what he's saying. Uh, he been telling. He been saying that for a while. Saying that, then you don't know the work we put in the streets at KHM, based yeah. on our disposition. Because for you to make a statement like that, it just goes to so. I think that your, your examination of Israelite culture is through the Judeo-Christian lens. The Judeo-Christianity, they don't have no solutions for black people or people of color because that's that's a religion, right? They they taken something from an indigenous people. And they extracted the elements that is beneficial to them. They gave the fluff back to the people and they created a system to use to dominate people of color, indigenous people. If we go back and we look at things or principles that's in the text, the principles in the text deal with things that are relevant to our community today. Whether you want to be able to sit here and prove that you are Israel, you're not Israel, you're a Christian or this or Muslim. The bottom line is if you're saying that can it help us to do anything positive in our community, of course it can. That's a totally different argument. That's a postmodernist argument. I wanted to deal with the modernist argument on the table in regards to the actual concrete evidence and how you develop a particular culture from what we have and understand reconstructively how do you apply it going and, forward and, in its context. And, 
And, and what I want to do, I, is, and, I, and I'm glad you want to keep it right there because I didn't, I didn't want the conversation to change. So because I want to keep it right there in the history and on where we're at because I don't want the conversation to change either. No, no, um, no. Cool, cool. So me bringing that up is to show that at that time, me bringing that up is to show at that time that. Those people who was writing that and who lived by those principles thought and looked at this person that they called the Christ as being the Messiah. So Wait, but that thing. So so so, so hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm talking about I'm talking about the book. Period. Because the book, when you when you look at it, it talks about the coming of him. Don't think I just jumped on here just wanting to bash the book. I was once a Bible believer. So hold up, hold up. The book talked about the coming of of, of a Messiah. Okay, so so you want to get into that same language in the Medunetia? No, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. See, hold up. I'm not I'm not a Medunetia follower or none of that. Don't do it. My brother, this is a this is something that is common in ancient Near Eastern culture. Every culture thought there was going to be a Messiah to come to rescue or redeem. Why do people enter? You breaking up? That brother is breaking up. Yeah, man, I think he got lost in the sauce, man. Okay. Go ahead, Demarco. You was going. You were saying something before he he jumped in. <clears throat> no, no, I was, I was, I was asking Jeremiah. Yeah, he people. wanted to flip. You saw. No, no, there you go. There you go, my brother. Uh, why? why, you, why you, what's you, the name you calling for? What are you talking about? I'm deflecting because I'm soft. What's that about? What's what's all that about, my brother? You deflected. Let's stick so, to the information. So, so I want to keep it right where we was. So deal with the information. And that's what I'm doing. You're trying to change it, and I'm not. So that's what I so let me get back to my point, please. So the fact that they were looking for the Messiah, I have a question. Could it be possible that that person already came? Who are you talking about? Are you talking about the Old Testament, question. the New Testament? Who are you who are you talking about? Who is the people? He said the Messiah might have already came. I, I don't I according to who? Damn. My opinion. According to who? The New Testament. I'm talking writing? about the book. Period. I don't care who I'm talking about. Every oh, okay. person who follows the Real book. Quick. Okay, so in regards to the tonight, a moment, right? The Tanakh uh, were right, they were right because, it, because it sounds like the, the conversation is, is going to change a bit. I, I real quick just want to say a, a quick remark. Follow oh, hold up, hold up. That's all. My, my oh, only, oh, oh. Who's that speaking? So my my only Matt. remark. Go ahead, Matt. Where you at, Matt? Hold on, let me get you on the screen. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Hey, go put your camera on, Matt. Go ahead, put your camera on, man. Everybody see you. Hey man, I'm 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 making hamburgers, goodness. But anyway, man, come on, bro. There okay, you go. so um my my only remark, because I want to continue to hear the conversation, by the way, Ron is killing it right now. My only remark and a question is this. This is my remark. My remark is I find it interesting that when you look at the church fathers, everybody knows that the early church fathers were black. These are people of color. There was a scholar, I forget his name, but Jay Smith had mentioned this scholar. And I remember I was reading up on it and that this scholar had put together all of the New Testament except for 11 verses using only the church fathers. The reason why I bring this up is because if they have an issue with you know, any of the manuscripts not being put together by black hands, what do uh -oh. you do with that reality? Now, my main question is this. If you're asking, hey, you know what? You can't prove that these writings were done by black hands. My question is, why does it even matter? And two, if it was able to be proven, would your argument against ron or myself or the bible in general be totally done away with if not why even bring up the question that okay. is my question that, that's to sabio uh, sabio go ahead and answer that brother that, that was to you 
Savio, Savio. I, I, I was the one who brought up the black hand thing, so that's. Oh, okay, okay. okay. All right, my fault, my fault. Oh, sorry. I, I believe the brother name is so real. Um, listen, check this out, brother. If if you are going to present information, I think that you need to do a little bit better job of actually coming with some, uh, you know, some some more tangible information just by saying that uh, somebody told you a name of some early black church father you don't you don't remember his name and you don't remember this that's not good enough bro straight up man you have saying so you going to have to step your scholarship up if you're going to be in the minds being oh. information man don't come up and talk about what you heard and you hey, don't come up with a dead talking about what you heard. You better bring some facts, Jack. Hey, listen, it, wow. absolutely, man. It, <laughs> ah, I like that, that you so real, man. Check this out, Matt. So real, man. What you need to do, man, is lace your boots, wake your game, oh. up, go get that information, <laughs> and then come back with the pack, Jack. It's <laughs> here, you know what I'm saying? Talking about what you heard, but 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 then when a question comes to well, who's this early church father you talking it's about? Okay. Oh, uh, I don't remember. <laughs> I just I, I I had her. That's not good enough, bro. You gotta come with some proof. You gotta come with some facts. Give us a name. Give us something that we can actually go and research if we have to, if we haven't heard of this information. But just by you talking about uh I, I I had her, that ain't good enough, Jack. So go get that information, man. And when you come back to the then, you know what I'm saying, man, get yeah, it. Um, hey, 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 DeMarco, you right. must ain't heard about uh, Matt so yeah, really. Right. These, and these, okay. YouTube, Facebook streets, well, man. Just, you, you're you're barking up the wrong tree. tree. Get him, man. Just, uh, I, uh, Jeremiah Judah, the first yeah, impression. Just, uh, is the first impression. Yeah, just, hold on, come on. Before impression. you continue, just, right, just real quick. So real. Hold on, just a moment. Before, before, before you continue, hold on, brother. Let, before you continue, let him get in. Let him get in, family. Hold on. Wait a minute. Before you continue, yeah. Before you continue, real quick, I had said that this was something that I had read to the point where I downloaded it on my computer for myself. This is this where, is detailed notes, PDF. I'll go ahead and um, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and put the link so that way maybe someone else can pull it up, but it does not negate the fact that I still want you to go ahead and address it no matter what you think about it. That, that's what I want you to do. You know, like, so I was wondering, could you do that? If, you know, since I said that, hey, there, there are church yeah, fathers so that are actually black, that you could show their pictures and see that they're black, and Matt's we have all, all of their writings. So, brother, I'm not going to. I'm almost done. I'm almost. I'm, a, I'm almost. I'm a, wait a minute. Go ahead. Go ahead. Bro, go ahead. I'm, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Go ahead, man. Okay, cool. Just real quick. It, it, just, <clears throat> okay, cool. Right. Right. All, I, all I'm saying is, is that. You know, even if I were you and I was in your position, I still would go ahead and give my view of whatever I disagree with. But at the same time, out of integrity, I still would go ahead and actually engage it. If there are, you know, since there are actual church fathers that are black and we can pull up their all of their photos right now and all of their early paintings right now showing that they are black and we do have all of their writings and they do quote the New Testament, and there was an actual scholar that put together the entire New Testament except for 11 verses. That would match your uh, concern or your question about, hey, are there any black hands that have gone ahead and had their hands in these writings that you have? That's what, that's what I'm saying. So it, it, if, if this is something that you acknowledge, you know, and I can go to show what may be so sufficient. Real. Brother, let me ask you a question. Are you sitting here admitting that none of these authors in the New Testament actually wrote these manuscripts because early church black father actually wrote no, these manuscripts? That, that's not, no, no, wait a minute. No, Man. that's not what I'm saying at all. I, no, that's not. Yeah, that's not what I'm saying at all. What are you saying? Uh, you said that they wrote. Said that they wrote. What, what, what I'm what I'm saying is. What, what are you saying? Turn my camera. What? Okay, there's a big long lag. That's not what I'm saying at all. You're you're okay. asking a whole different Fair question about did Paul and Peter and everybody else actually write those actual manuscripts and no. things? Yes, they actually no. wrote to those I churches. Believe. That's not the question. 
the question is, do you have evidence of actual people of color that have actually wrote the New Testament? And if I end up showing you that there are church fathers who are people of color through so the paintings that we can pull up right now that everyone's so real. Man, so real. This is why you at a disadvantage, mm -hmm. bro. And, and and listen, man, okay. you body back yourself is because you are sitting here admitting that there are early black church fathers that wrote scriptures of the New Testament. So you're saying that now I don't know what scriptures you're talking about in the New Testament that these so-called black early black church because you haven't given us any names. All this is assertions and speculation. Yep. So what I'm saying is, are you sitting here saying that Matthew did not write Matthew, Luke didn't write Luke, Peter didn't write Peter, John didn't write Revelations, Paul didn't write the epistles? You're, 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 no, you're, you're, that is you're not what, no, okay, no, that oh, is not what I, no, to answer you directly, wait, 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 to answer you directly, okay, to, to answer you directly, not only is that not what I'm saying at all, but... Okay. The reason why the church fathers even have those quotes is because they're actually quoting the people that they were discipled under. That's the reason why their actual apostolic succession is in their writings. In other words, you'll see church fathers say, hey, my apostle that taught me was John. Why? Because John wrote that stuff. So whatever they're quoting, they're only quoting what the apostles wrote. So I'm not saying that at all. And plus, it, you're getting off of the focus of what I'm asking you because it's directly aligned with your concern. Do you have okay. black hands? Hey, 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 I told you, you man, ain't no joke, boy. I told you. <laughs> I, 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 I told you. Check this out, man. Your boy, man, is light work, man. <laughs> hey, listen, Matt, so real. Listen to my question. I mean, listen to the question that I propose to Divine Prospect. And I think out of all people who answered this question, he 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 answered it in a way that I can actually rock with. My question was, can you name one black hand that wrote anything in the Bible, whether it's the Torah, the Tanakh, the Ketuvim? The Apocrypha, yes, yeah. any of the new gospels. Can you give me a name? Yes, of a I, yeah, yes I can. I can yeah. name one. Yes, I can I name one. I can name one. No name. So now I, you got to uh, uh, just you got to answer now. Right. Okay, you did not ask me. Wait, I can name one. Okay, well, who is it? Okay, the, the person is Paul. Why do I say this? Why now? Why do I say this? I say this because. There are early paintings of Paul, oh, and guess what? When you see it, he looks like your uncle. That's my answer to you. Bro, Paul was black. <laughs> Did you just say Paul was black, bro? Yeah, he said Paul was black. Who got a problem with that? Come on, man. Cut That's that so nonsense out. Check this out, bro. Check this out, man. You on and Gilligan. Solomon was black, too. That's right. Matt, Matt, so real. You on Gilligan's Island right now, bro. You know that Paul was not black. Solomon God, wasn't man. black neither, man. Somebody God, said, yeah, man. Solomon. No, Solomon wasn't black. No scripture. I'll tell you what. All right. All right. Hold up, G-Con. I'm going to send you the link. Because anyone can pull up the picture of Paul. G-Con is already on the panel, yeah. is that my final question to you is, Bro, why stop it. does it not no, my final no, question to you brother, is you why it, does it matter? Why does it have to be a black hand that to Absolutely. write the old and new right. testament? Like, why does it have to be black? Look, That's look, what look, I honestly want to know. Let me, let me, let me, I'm gonna answer for you. The reason why it matters is because to 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 the people that you're speaking to, in order for us to see if something is epigenetically designed for black people. They want the descendancy or the ancestry of that thing to come from people that look like us, have the same DNA as us, same phenotypes as us, because in their minds, they can relate better to it as a greater affinity. And this is why they're asking us to prove the notion, right? This, uh, that's why. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, brother. Um, that okay, was great you know pseudo speed, boy. Yeah, so that was great right, pseudo right, speed. Right, we got the answer, Bill. Let's have a minute. Hold on for a minute. Okay, Brother hold on Dubai. just a minute. Just one more thing. This brings a final question. This is Man, great. So basically, what we, can, what we can say is, 
real, real quick. So, uh, so basically, what we can really say is, is that if ever one day that me or Ron Shields or anybody just happens to finally prove and show with all this empirical evidence that people of color wrote these texts, would they then go ahead and concede or actually relent on their attack on the Bible? Would they finally say, okay, it's valid, uh, anything like that? Because if they still wouldn't, then the question is, why does it matter? If they still would just say, oh, it's still false. Oh, it's still crazy, and uh, you guys should do away with it. Man, so real. Okay, let question. me, uh, let me yeah, answer that. Oh, let me answer that. Hold up. Let me answer that question real quick. Have you so, Black Jesus turn. No, no. Let, okay, let him, let him go ahead. Let, that let me answer go. that oh. question. All right, come so, on, man. So, 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 it... so, even if y'all on the, on, the, on the one in 27 billion chance that y'all will prove that the writers of these texts happen to be black. Will we accept it? You would have no choice but to accept it. I wouldn't. Why? Because that's what the science says. So I'm going to go with what the evidence says. But would we say, why does it matter in 2020? Because the evidence of the book says that the man has already came and passed. So if it's time to let it go from my standpoint because it's not going to happen. We need to wake up and do it for ourselves. That's my, my stand. Brother, and if we don't are, teach are you, our children, hold up, hold up, let me say something. Hold up, let me say something. Don't hold, interrupt. Say something? hold up, let me finish. Let me finish. Can I finish? Yes, you can. Now, I came here because Jeremiah Judah has always been equal, so he let people speak. So when people interrupt, I kind of get upset because that lets me know you're deflecting and you don't want to answer the question. So the first question I ask, it still hasn't fully been answered by anyone. And I'm going to shut up when some and, and, and let someone answer that question. Could it be possible that he's died already? And if so, how can he come back? Because in the book, it said he was resurrected three days later. Okay, so, huh, if he died and came back, he can't be re-resurrected. All right, brother, I'll try to answer that if I get a chance to come on and, 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 and pick up where yeah, I, I left off. Go ahead, Uncle. All right, 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 right. let the elder answer. Everybody mute right, uh, 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 your mic. Yeah, put everybody on the screen real quick. All right, all right, Here we I go. got everybody on the screen. Here we go. Now, uh, DeMarco, DeMarco, I'm going to drag your ass back over to the uh, Septuagint and the, uh, 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 the, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls. I'm going to drag your ass back there in just a second. So you just hold on tight, bro. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, brother. Um, you already uh, ran from me once. Uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, brother Divine, do you confirm, brother, as a scholar? That uh, that Paul was a black man, and that there's a portrait of Paul in the cave of Greece, where he was on the island of Patmos, where where the, where the saints go there to this day, and black Paul is painted on the walls of that cave in Patmos. Do you uh, do you uh, uh, confirm that? Or do you know that, brother? Ooh wee. Uh, so I'm gonna say I'm a researcher, teacher, right? Um, but thank you, I appreciate the scholar <laughs> nomenclature, but. In regards to the Paul writing that you're saying, I've I've seen it, but I mean I don't know if that proves anything, right? But it's there. Thank you, no, brother. Thank I, you. I, I uh, okay, that. thank I don't you. Know that's, all, that's all I want. Uh, that's all I need to confirm, brother. Okay, cool, that, cool. that the painting is there, and that he is a black man, and not only is Paul on that wall, uh, Jesus Christ is on the wall. Now put every. I won't see everybody's face, Jer uh, Jeremiah Judah. Okay. So wait, um, um yeah. Black Jesus Minister, they're gonna yeah. need you to pull up that that source. They got they have well, to see. Well, I'll do it later, man. I just, I just, I'm, I'm just getting confirmation before I get if I have time to do that. Bro. Brother, brother, calm your butt down for a second, Show Demarco. Us that picture, man, Demarco, you know, Demarco, no, I will, brother. I'll be quiet. If it, either either I'm lying, and and my brother's lying, he's seen it, and I'm seeing it. Now let me ask, brother, uh, uh Matt so real, brother Matt, do you also confirm? about that picture on the island of Patmos uh, of, of Paul and Jesus Christ as being painted black in Greece. 
Yes, I do confirm it. I said it before. You. He looks Thank like somebody's you. uncle. Uh, Laron, do you confirm that as well, dear brother? Nah, I ain't seen no picture at all. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So you got three scholars on here that saw that picture, and I'm going to pull it up and show it to you, DeMarco. Thank you. Now, well, let's, now let me drag your ass back on over here uh, 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 to the Dead Sea Scrolls, buddy, and let me uh, share my screen. All righty. Okay. Damn, I think it's showing. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. It ain't showing, Black Jesus. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm almost there. All right, can y'all save my screen? Uh, let me see. Uh oh, you gotta click my screen, bro. Click my, click my. Hey, I, I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah. You know, you know, you know. I'm new at this, y'all. Just bear with me. There you go. All right. Let me let me remove this banner. Hold up, because it's, it's covering it up. And, and when when he's done, I want to put another source on the screen for the Septuagint. Yeah, that's, okay, that's cool. Scholar. <clears throat> now, can y'all see my screen? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, Demarco, you see what With I got the PDF, highlighted? Come on, blue? man. Demarco, you see I got this line right here highlighted in blue. Oh, Wikipedia, Septuagint. huh? Wikipedia. Okay. Brother, yeah, come on, this ain't scholarship. Bro, this is buffoonership, bro. bro. God, you already ran from me, bro. Once. Bro, you little internet dumbass yeah. niggas that don't even know what the inside of a college is. Please be quiet, bro. Where is he at? Shut up, bro. Okay, come on, come on. Whatever, whatever thoughts I pull up. You take your little okay, dumb ass okay. and you refute it, okay? When I get through showing it to you, because you ain't gonna refute a goddamn thing on Wikipedia. All right, you too goddamn dumb. Now, again, brother, right Come on, here, Blackie, let's come back. Oh, yeah, you got to the reason why. Goddamn, do you come back to the The reason why I can't wait to see it right now is because I'm just gonna say that. All right, Matt, okay. Now, let let the elders speak, please. Now. Brother, just like you said earlier, bro, the Septuagint goes back to the, the second century. You see it right there. 285 to, four, to 247 BCE. 285 to 247 BCE. When I asked your raggedy ass in the beginning, why on, did you, okay, why did I ask you why did you sit up here and ask us about uh, uh is there an older manuscript older than the septuagint and you knew about the dead sea scrolls being older and then your slick ass gonna come on here and still hold on to that lie and say that the septuagint is older than the dead sea scrolls bro okay now when we get through brother you're gonna apologize to the people for your ignorance bro okay now bro now here we go Now you're looking at the Dead Sea Scrolls, bro. What date do you see over here in the upper in the bottom right hand corner right there, bro? The dates of the Dead Sea Scrolls range from 400, 408 BCE to 318 CE. So the oldest is 408 BCE. The range is from 408 BCE all the way to 3. 118 CE. This is the range, but the oldest is 408, bro. So just in case you forgot, bro, being slick and being a liar, you just admitted that the Septuagint, and you were correct, was 285 to 247 BCE. So now you see, brother, okay? Now you see that the Dead Sea Scrolls, which you knew all along, was older than the Septuagint. Don't come in here playing game and running games on people, bro. Or either you was lying or you was ignorant or you was playing games. One or the other, bro. Now let's move it on to the next evidence that I want to show you, bro. Okay, so now we know the Dead Sea Scrolls is older than the Step 2. And now you know it. Now, there are scrolls even older than that. The Dead Sea Scrolls is the second oldest scroll. Actually, I think it's, it's not the second oldest scroll because I'm going to show you something older than what I'm showing you right now. Look at this, bro. 
the silver scrolls. Do you see right here? Man, the I already scrolls. mentioned the silver scrolls, bro. What, what are you talking about? What, what you are you talking listening? about? Brother, what are you talking about? What I'm talking about? You yeah, we did mention the silver scrolls, but bro, somebody bro. obviously did too. Black but, uh, Jesus uh, Minister, man, listen. Right, bro. Go ahead, let him, and, and DeMarco, let him finish his dig, and then you come bro, back. Bro. Bro. Cool, cool. Yeah, you all, right, yeah. all right, two minutes remaining, Black Jesus. Go ahead, fam. I'm gonna do it. In, I'm gonna be there in less than two minutes. Okay, you fam. Thank here, you. you see here the Silver Scrolls, Hebrew written in Paleo Hebrew. Okay, and what's the date on it, bro? 650 BCE to 587 BCE, bro. Even older than the Dead Sea Scrolls, older than the Septuagint, bro. Now let's go even further back than that, uh, brother Demarco. Let's go back even further, bro. The Ebla tablets, bro. The Ebla tablets uh, 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 contain many of the elements of the Old Testament. The foundations of the Old Testament stories is in the Ebla tablets. Bro. I told y'all y'all didn't want no parts of Black Jesus. Okay. I told y'all he ain't playing. Get him, Elder. And, and what's the date on the Ebla tablets, bro? 2500 BC, bro. With your silly ass. Come on, Alex. All right, come on, Black Jesus. Now, now, let me finish, bro. Let me All right, finish. one more minute. So 2500 BC, bro, to 2250 BC, bro. Okay? Now, brother, you got a lot to goddamn learn, but don't come in here being slick with some goddamn champions and scholars, bro. You drug, bro. I try okay. to tell you. I, 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 I'm done. I, I, I tried to warn him before he came in here. I'm done. Now, I, I want to see you be a man and apologize, brother, for your error. Oh, man. All right, go ahead, family. Right, you finish? <laughs> yes, sir. All right, cool. <laughs> Listen, check this out, man. Uh, Black Jesus Minister, man. I don't know, man, if your dementia kicking in, bro, but, you know, man, some, 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 some of the information... That you did, we already spoke on. Check this out, bro. When I asked you, can you name? Can can is there is is there is there any Dead Sea Scroll? I'm talking about the Torah. We're talking about the first five books, older than the Septuagint. Bro, what you showed when it came to the Dead Sea Scrolls when you mentioned, I believe, it was the 408 BCE. Do you know what you was mentioning right there? That's the Bro, bro, that's the Psalms tablet. So I'm not asking you anything about the Tanakh. I wasn't talking about the Tanakh. I was talking about the first five books. And what you brought up <laughs> was dealing with the Psalms. Oh, uh, boy, you think you slick, boy. Hey, look, check this out, bro. When you brought up, um, if you go to Wikipedia, which is your source, because you're a Wikipedia guru, we know that you don't deal with nothing outside of Wikipedia. When you go to Wikipedia, you clearly see that it say the Psalm Scrolls. I didn't ask you about the Psalm Scrolls, bro. I'm, I'm talking about the Septuagint. Bro, this show, bro, we ain't got it all day, bro. This show is recording, show, bro. Can I finish my statement? You over here lying right now, nigga. You talking about the whole Old Testament, bro. And you listen, fuck this show, out, bro. Like you you, you, you talking about the only the first five. Come on, man, nigga, that's Come not down. what I said, man. That's why, I said. that's why I asked you, is your dementia kicking in? Because I didn't say the whole Bible, bro. I said the Torah. That's why I asked you. He's trying to switch it up now, bro. bro. I said, hey, listen, cool. check this out, bro. Hey, listen, check this out, Black Jesus Minister. You've been on hold for a whole hour, and what you come back with is some Wikipedia garbage because you wasn't listening to what I was saying. What I told oh, you, go you listen, though. check this out, bro. What I said was, when it comes to the Torah, can you okay. show me something older than the Sept? To it when it comes to what we would know as a complete writing, even if you don't believe that the Torah right. is a complete writing, right. this is what I said. Come on, right. bro. bro okay, let, me right. you, brother. Right. let me respond to you, and I'm gonna be done. Okay, brother, then we're gonna move to the next time. Now, look here, brother. This whole show is recorded, bro. And you can think you switch it up and think you're gonna sit up man, here, Black and Jesus. Say, brother, brother, man, let me finish, bro. Body bag yourself, bro, bro. You don't bro, listen, let me man. Finish, bro please. Get off of Gilligan's bro, Island, bro, bro. bro. I'm on and listen to what bro. I'm saying, bro. Brother, brother, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk and I'm gonna get off the goddamn show, bro. I nah, don't go black. I didn't had enough of uh, amateur dumbasses. Hey, hey, listen, bro, 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 
Man, bro, Black Jesus Minister, bro, man, you a clown, bro. I know, bro. Don't be like, you like garbage thing on the panel. Why you want to talk shit? You a clown, Black Jesus. You want to right. You already ran from me once, punk. Now, you, come on, man. You, you just lost a debate, man. Don't make me go get old boy back out on you. Now, uh, now Marco, don't make me go get hold on. Let me address the Sabio because he's been talking crap. Now, this brother right here keeps telling us that he, he follows Pan Africanism, right? Okay, so in Pan Africanism, that Marcus Garvey did not one time tell anybody to get rid of they get rid of their book, get rid of their religion. It was all about the race first. But for some reason, this brother accepts everybody's religion except the Hebrew Israelites. Now, I got a problem with that, man, because that's some biased bullshit. Now, I want you to address that right now, Sabio. Go ahead. Oh, no, wait a minute. But before he addresses it, he shot himself in the foot. Let me yeah, go yeah. ahead and explain All right. how. All right. Help he with actually the asked, he said, bro. Okay, real quick, I just want to say this, right? He actually said, look, look at the Septuagint. I have a problem with it, so can you find something older than the Septuagint, and it has to be a complete manuscript. It can't be a fragment. It has to be a complete manuscript. Well, if that is the case, then his standard of searching actually validates the Septuagint. Let me explain. If the Septuagint is in its completeness, and all of a sudden we find some kind of fragment or tons of fragments that are older than the Septuagint, and the Septuagint is saying it, then that goes to show that whatever the Septuagint came from, it came from some other complete body of work. And if you actually agree that that complete body of work in Hebrew or whatever, even though it's gone and we only have fragments, if you concede that you agree that that Hebrew is the original and that would be the one that you would thumbs up, then that would mean that whatever the Septuagint quotes and all of a sudden it's identical to the older pieces of the Hebrew, then you would also have to go ahead and agree with the Septuagint because the Septuagint isn't quoting anything out of the out of the wazoo. It's quoting the very thing that you're looking for as a whole. But we found the parts. So if you don't agree with the parts, then you don't agree with the whole. But you do agree with the whole. You just haven't found it. So therefore, why would you disagree or have a problem with the parts that we have found? And if those parts that we have found are identical in a complete text that you have an issue with, then that's a double standard. You shot yourself in the foot. I told you that our man scholarship. is so real in the building. Right. I told you, don't let take me, this person lightly. I'm told you. Say, hold on, let me tell you. Hey, go ahead. Hold on, hold on, one other time. Hold on. Who well, wants to go there? That ain't no joke. Well, well, who got? Who let, me, let me finish real quick. All right, go ahead, Black Jesus. And I'm gonna shut the hell up. All right, uh, brother Demarco. Uh, what what Matt Surreal just said to you was was surgical, bro. Uh, uh, now was look here, brother. Man. Now look here, brother. Was uh, hold on, hold on, Demarco. Hold on, you hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm all done. Hold on. Uh, now look, brother. Uh, if I don't know if you saw my interview with Dr. Smalls, did you see my interview on Sarnetta with Dr. Yeah, Smalls? I seen that the Black Jesus. Yeah, you no, did. I don't, I don't know, know you, I'm talking to Marco. Oh, okay. No, I don't know you. Oh, that's fine, brother. That's fine. Okay. Well, I'm going to share with you. Uh, do you know Dr. Dr. James Smalls? Yes. Yeah, I'm familiar. Okay, good. With elder. I had a, I had an interview with Dr. Smalls on Sarnetta, and even before this damn interview, I, I because I study him as well. And I gave him a, a credit for teaching me a lot of things. Uh, I have a video snippet. I'm going to send you the whole damn video of Dr. Smalls teaching about the historicity of the Israelites and showing you pictures of the Israelites. And these Israelites are black people, bro. That's right. Okay. That's right. So, brother, I'm going to show you, I'm going to send you that video, bro, of Dr. Smalls teaching that the Israelites are black people Israelites showing you not ancient black. Bro, Israelites is not black, bro. Knock it off. God damn, bro. Bro, stop. See, why, why are you running your goddamn mouth and I'm talking? Shit? I'm a grown bro. ass man. That's bro. I'm right yeah, come on, come on, bro. bro. Let's I'm talking to you not about what I say. I like this, I'm, saying, I'm talking to you about what Dr. James Small says. What does that have to do with the more than anybody on this panel, and he ain't no believer, bro. Okay? 
I'm going to send you, since you're the one that want to know about are there any black hands that did the writing to these bodies. It so wasn't. you need to understand that the Israelite are an African yeah, white. Wasn't. Bro, goddamn, will you stop, bro? Can you name you, one black so hand that wrote anything wanna, in the Bible? Bro, will you please? Since yeah, you right. want to know that black hands have anything to do with the Torah, I'm going to send you the video of Dr. Smalls explaining and showing that the ancient Israelites are an African people, sir. And that should satisfy your question and anybody else unless you think that Dr. James Small mm -hmm. is a goddamn quack. Do you think he's a quack? <laughs> yes or no? Hey, right, listen. Check this out. So can I answer? Can I respond? Yeah, go ahead, fellas. All right. All right. Okay, yeah, I know you had, I know you had muted my mic. Yeah, so, I, mean, I want to be everybody do, do not talk over each other. Go listen, ahead. Okay, cool. So listen, check this out. Dr. Smalls is an elder. I respect him being an elder. And whatever research that he brought forth to prove that the Israelites was black, I haven't seen that. What I'm telling you is I will have to look at his, look at his information and then I will make a critical and logical decision based off of the information that he brought forth. What I'm telling you right now is that I know for a fact that the ancient Israelites were not black. You are That's lying. Who, where, where did you get that fact from? Whoa, 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 Cause I haven't said I'm just listening. And if you just use common sense, if you make the Bible white, to push Kemet would be that much easier on black people because they can't disprove that Kemet was black. So we say if the Jewish man or the white man wrote the Bible and the people of the Bible are, are white, they can easily push that Pan African agenda on everybody. But that's not true. So like the brother Matt said, how you going to just discredit Israelites as being black when first of all, if y'all niggas got any type of education, you know anybody from that landmass or that region was dark. Period. Right. Period. You do any real archaeological history, you're not going to find white people in that area two, three thousand, four, five thousand years ago. And they they show, us the white. White. They show us the white man that supposedly just converted listen, everybody over there. Listen, 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 and I think Thank you, you seriously for the truth and you're willing to accept certain statements so brothers can, can fact check. You know what I'm saying? Right. My question for you is this, my brother. Can you reference us to any art in the ancient Near East and point to it and say those are the Israelites? Can you show us something? Or just give me give me a relief or anything. It could be from any culture. Because that's the only way we would know, right? Because it's written about these no, I'm, people. I'm, 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 this this is what I'm saying. I can I can point you to who is believed to be Israelites. I mean, if we go look at the Hyksos, uh, if we go look at the, you said that's what? Not, that, that's that was only written by Apion. That was not nobody else says that. If you go into Josephus's work, Josephus was arguing against Apion. Apion was the one making that argument. Nobody else in history made that argument prior to Apion, in the writings of Josephus. That's where that comes from. Listen, listen. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sitting here saying who made the argument. I'm saying that Israelites. There's plenty of Israelites who believe that the Hyksos coming into ancient Kemet. When we look on the walls of Kanumhotep, which is where this picture is at, or this depiction is at, you have Israelites who actually believe that these are black Israelites or black people I coming I hear into. You. Yeah, right. So, so, but here's the thing. Here's the problem. They can believe all they want. I'm asking you, since you're saying that these people were not black, can you give right. us an art reference in any ancient Near Eastern context, in situ, not something found on the black market, something that was found in the excavation of an art, and point to it and say, those are Israelites, and this is why I know that they're not black. Can you do that? Listen, this, 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 this is what I believe. I believe that... Sure. Um, the excavation that they did on the land of Canaan um, when it came to the remains that they found of these bones um, 
in in, in Canaan, which is Israel today, or or uh, these so-called ancient Israelites would look like Lebanese people. They would look like people from Lebanon. They would look like people that were pre-Arabs. Now, uh-huh. I, 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 I've seen that before. Hold, hold, go, on, go hold, ahead, on, hold on, hold no, on, hold on. Go, one, one, one more I'm thing, because I know you want to go in on this. No, let him go. No, time out. Time out. Show the evidence. <laughs> Look, no, 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 no. Show, show the evidence on screen. No, no, no. no wait. Wait a minute. Wait a second. Show the. No, wait. Oh, hold on. Time out. Show the evidence on screen. That, man. I'm using your own words and standards against you. Pull up the stuff like Ron did. Hey. Go ahead. Please show us. Okay. So I've this- seen that before, man. It, 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 I know what he's talking about. Okay. But here's what they. But here's what they're missing, everybody. See, if y'all go look up the book, The Black Image and the White Mind, they, they, this it was racist dude that was doing skull comparisons. He compared the Egyptian skulls, and then he compared the Negro skulls that was found in Egypt. And then he compared those skulls to the Negroes that's over here in America right now, and he said the same Negroes that were serving, uh, uh, servitude in America is, a, is the same Negroes that were serving servitude in Egypt. You go look that up, The Black Image and the White Mind. Go look the book up. All right. right um, so wait, wait. So with that said, what I want to simply say is, I know your Negroes over there. Hold on, Devon. Yeah, one more thing to say before, before, before Devon Prospect go in. I, right, go ahead. I do know. I do know that recently. Switch back, um, Jeremiah. Let's see. Let's see the panel. Switch it back. Okay. Okay. okay I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, so I do know. Well, I read a couple of months ago that they did excavate some remains and what we know today is israel but they are so-called refusing to do dna analysis on these remains you're a smart brother you a smart brother (laughs) (laughs) that's my man he being Uh, honest though he keeping it in the pocket i ain't gonna lie yeah so (laughs) now now I, I have the article. Why, we'll bring it up when you finish. But go ahead. Why, right. So I don't know why they refusing to the so-called do these did. I'm just saying, if they <laughs> do do it, and it comes back that these remains have nothing to do with Negroes, would you still adhere to the belief system of the Torah? I'm gonna let you rock out. But you know what That's I'm talking about. Right? So that's an excellent question, and I think the best way to answer that would be to know who are who are these people that they're exhuming the remains from, right? And I'll give you an example, and I'm just doing this, again, I'm not evading, I'm just making a comparison. Sometimes we make comparisons just to give people more concrete. They're all oh, you running. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, if we, just like, for example, if I go into ancient Kemet, right, and we look at the genealogical analysis that was done on various Nasuts, some of them don't always have on we only got ramses the third that got e1 b1 uh b you know what i'm saying we have some with r haplogroup group types we got some with um some uh mixture of um um uh what's the other haplogroup? group uh regular e1 b1 and then we have some from another divergent uh clad it escapes you right now if these are the people that represent the entire kingdom of kemet which again they only represent one to two percent of the entire populace. If we, when we find out looking at DNA that these individuals don't have E1, B1, B like us, do we reject all of Kemet because that's the case? We, we, you don't do nothing like that. You cannot just go to a few people and say, okay, look, I got this one person here. I did a, a, a sequence of the genome. And look, if I parse it out, look at the allele. in order to determine what the haplogroup group is, guess what? This person is an R haplotype. You know what? Throw all of Egypt in the garbage. But the Egyptians are not depicting themselves as people of pale skin. So, so you still have to harmonize that, right? Haplogroups or genetics is not the bottom line in regards to determining the ethnicity of a people, right? And there's an article, great article I'm going to bring up. And the reason why I ask you this, let me, give you, let me put you on the game, DeMarco, right? It's an article that I had recently launched, and I've shared this on my channel. And what it does is that it deals with the material culture and lines of clothing and jewelry. What a lot of people in a comedic community do is that they'll bring up the nine bowls of, of the enemies of Ramses, right? The second, and they'd be like, look, you see these people right here, these are these are Israelites. The problem with that is that when you look at the clothing and jewelry from the things we've escated in situ, that means insight 
on Israelite sites, they don't have those jewelry and they don't have that clothing. It becomes a big problem because now what people are doing is they're superimposing an ethnicity on another group when you're not looking at all the material culture to see if that's the case. Another thing they use is ceramics, right? They look at various wares and they say, okay, look, a lot of times the wares follow the people or sometimes it can be traded if it's an isolated wear as opposed to a group of wares, right? If it's an isolated wear, we can say, okay, look, somebody traded that, they had money, they went and did some maritime trade and they picked up this wear and this is why we find it in isolation. But if we see a group of wares, for example, the Israelite wear is a uh, burnished color, it has a uh, uh, black bands and it has a collared lid. If we see that in any sites excavated in Iron Age 1, 2, 2A, 2B, 2C, we know that we're dealing eth ethnically as these are Israelite sites. We look at the diets, so we look at all the fauna of the plants that are there in that region to see if they align with what we see in the text. And we also look to see the animals that have human bite marks on it so we can determine if this is food they ate. Well, they see that in Israelite sites, there's no pig bones, there's no dog bones that were used for food that we see in the coastal plains and Philistine sites, right? These are all what's called ethnic markers. So ethnic markers is not just genetic markers. These are things in the material culture that help to define the ethnicity of a group. This is why whenever I ask somebody, show me any art in ancient Near Eastern history, because the Israelites, according to their culture, they don't make any uh, drawings or pictures of themselves. They don't do that. That was a taboo in their culture. Every ancient Asian culture had taboos. That was one of their taboos. So it's other people that would have to show forth this or draw this, et cetera, right? And if I go to those people and I say, okay, let's look at the Babylonians or the Assyrians, right? We've seen the Lachish reliefs of Assyria, right? You can point at it, so we know these are Israelites. Some people say, well, they look like they could be, you know, have some Negro features. Some people say, well, well, it's not really Negro features. That's relative. When it comes to actually examining that, those are not painting in any colors. Those are using actually, actually sculpted in with the material that is there in order to create those sculptures. Like there's no color. They didn't paint it. There's no color there. You understand what I'm saying? So it's difficult for somebody to say that these people are not black, either if we're looking at something concrete or something literary because in the ancient world black and white did not matter to them they didn't think like we think today and anybody in ancient Eastern culture who's a professor who's worth a dime to his name will tell you that the way we depict race today is based on racist anthropological constructs they didn't use that during that time so it makes it, it makes it a problem for us when we try to impose that to say well this is the only way we can give validity to this group because Hey, look, you know, if you look at the DNA of the culture, these people are not black, they're not us, so let's leave them alone. That's that's a big problem. In? That's a huge problem. Let me get in on this. Let me get in on this real quick. Yeah, hey, okay, you got deep oh, Hold up. Right. And, yeah. uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Hold on, let go me get in on that's, this. That's Matt quick, Buddy uh, right there. Christian yeah, Pollock. Uh, so, so 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 me personally, you know what I'm saying? Like uh I'm, I, I roll with the uh, Ron Shields on, on some of that, you know what I'm saying? And also the other brother, too, just hey, where we start. Hey, brother, can you show your face? Um, I got, I'm on my, this tablet with a camera. Oh, okay, okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm on all a right. truck camera. I ain't on my phone, I'm on my phone. Okay, all right. So anyways, um, I'm on a Rand McNally tablet. But anyways, um, so when you deal with the Canaanite, right? So th this is, this marker or this mutation that we see, is around possibly they say three thousand years old and so it uh it, it goes way back you know what i'm saying and so what they did was they looked at you know certain people that we would have seen today that's in those areas today that still has uh similar mutations uh high mutations uh of the, of the same people who was back during those times and so they can say well at least we know that these people still been in this area for a little bit of time for a long time and so what, what happens is like you can't really look at a haplogroup group and say well, this person is is uh is is, is is this he was with this group or he relates to this group mono kind of i mean uh what is it autosomal dna is where you could determine where certain mutations would have took place at like for instance e1b1a we know that uh uh that is something that originated within africa and so if you say that you are a israelite you should autosomally have mutations that would trace back to geographical locations that they would have picked up either by sexual selection either by uh or either by um also diet climate and those different things and so if you say that you are an israelite right you should have markers that will that ensure connection with people that is in that vicinity because you would have ate the same 
there would have been plenty of sexual selection. Like for instance, when you look at JP209 or uh, J1C3 markers that we see, these are markers that are heavily in uh, Iraq, heavily in the uh, what we call the Middle East or the Levant area today, heavily in Iran. These markers that we see is, is markers that they look for when you look at biblical times to see if somebody has a connection or of being an Israelite. And so if you say you're an Israelite, you should have you should develop these marks or you should have had these mutations because you were among these people and so what we see like with the koshian jews the koshian uh -oh. jews don't do it don't do yeah. that man oh yeah I, yeah I, i'm gonna do it when you look at the koshian jews right the jews that we see the jews the koshian jews that are in those areas are israelites these are the uh, ones who say that they came up out of the first uh temple right captivity and those are white are guys koshian right jews. Uh, no, they 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 look like they look like India people. They look like people that's from India, basically. Oh, that's how okay. they look. And so and so when you look at them, what yeah. happens is G -Con, what, I, I ain't trying to cut you, but you I know, Jikan, one more thing, and I'm gonna let you go. You know that some of them, right. some of the people from India is, is, is darker than me. Uh, you know that, right? They black as hell. Yeah. They come, they come, they right. come from uh, they come from Ethiopians, bro. Some of them people. Right, right. Well, I wouldn't say they come from Ethiopian. Uh, now, nah, that's that's a different group. Now, so so what happens is this: is this what they found out? Is this is when you look at the Meyer, the empty DNA of those people who are saying that they Jews, right? What we find out is that on their empty DNA, they've take the men who have Middle Eastern DNA uh, have moved to or haplogroups have moved to what we see those areas and took on those foreign women that's what we find and we can see that that actually happened you know how we know that happened because when israelites was taken out of the land they wasn't taking their wives they was taken by majority of them was taken as servants and they was taken to places and they was given women or they picked up women in those places and so when you look at a koshian jew he looks like a mixture of a jew that is from india and also one that is from basically uh one that one that is uh also from the uh, levi area and so like for instance when you look at the the uh, and so when you say what a jew supposed to look like what an israelite look like they will look like various of people due to the fact of them being in various land and going through slavery when you look at the the normal black person we see today of america black american they look like the people who also they went in kind who, who took over them and also different other nations just as well as well as their own people why because they've been scattered and so when you get the sad stuff like 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 oh well this what they looked like back then but even when they was in Kemet, they was in a great civilization and in that civilization it wasn't just a black civilization and so one thing i do agree with why she was this is the ancient world didn't look at a person and say who's black or who's this or who's that like we will look at people today that's foreign to them it was really due to the perspective of their cultural background their tongues their language what they spoke because all black people in the land of kemet didn't get along with each other well in kemet didn't get along with each other or what we were well, well the whole of africa these are different cultures of people different lands different deeds different boundaries and so when you go going to try to do what the white man has done, white supremacy, and say, well, we're going to go, we're going to categorize these people as this, and this is their boundary, this is their uh, 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 tectonic plate right here, so we're going to cut this off right here, this is their land, you out of pocket. You're doing the same thing that the oppressors have done. And so what I'm saying is this is, however, when we look at that Canaanite DNA, it does trace back to a people who have markers that was in those areas, that would have been in those areas a long time today if you are saying you're an israelite right you should have shared connection with those very people of those lands that, that, of those they would have traced back during those times it's been in those places for a long time some of those people never moved they've been there for the longest and you should have a connection with them and shared information with them genetically and when you don't have those markers then you have to look at it and say, well, hold on for a minute. Am I really that? Like me, I took my DNA test. I have markers that go from uh, uh, Far East Asia, right? Uh, Native American markers, Europe markers, and mainly 83% uh, of Sub-Saharan African. 
the rest, I can already, I already knew that already. I already knew that I had markets that went back 15 to 16% overall of other uh, ethnicities that we see because I knew already my makeup of my uh, genealogy of some of my parents and with Europeans and things of that matter, you know what I'm saying? So if you're saying you go back to Israel, you need to have some markers and certain mutations to where we, when we look at your SNP, we can see that there is some things that, uh, uh, that might have at that time changed or been similar to where we can look biologically so, trace those things. So, so, so let me ask you a question. So E1B1A does not, you're saying they don't have anything to do with uh, uh, us being a Hebrew Israelite because they say that, that the E1B1A, that a lot of Negroes had this E1B1A, uh, we say marker. E1B1A is not a Hebrew Israelite or anything marker. That marker exists before a Hebrew Israelite existed. That's true. That's true. Hey, Jeremiah Judah, where are, are you broadcasting on YouTube? No, it's, it's on the Lions Den uh, Facebook page. Okay, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to comment here in the comment section. Do I have to go there and comment on? The yeah, comment yeah, 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 yeah. Go there. Like, What's the name of the group again, so everybody can know? Yeah, in the group is a Facebook. It's, a, it's like you know, like, like like people got an individual page, not a group. Yeah. Tell everybody's it's, name. Lions Den. I, I I put it in the. Uh, yes, Lions Den. You got it. I sent it to you to your back chat several times. But I'm gonna send it to you again. All right. But hey, hey black people, you, you are correct. Hebrews in the hood is correct. There are groups of Kushites that we see that we can see that are genetically related to Ethiopians. We can see that in India. They do. They look just like them. They did a DNA test. They closely related to them. Now, but when you talk about the Dravidians, these people are not closely related to what we see people in Africa, but are darker than them, and they have black jet black hair. So they're not so where, related to these people. Where, closely, so uh, if we, if we are not, hold up, brother. If I, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, that was rude. Go, go ahead, finish. Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Down, bro. All right. So if we're not the uh, the Negro is not the uh, tribe of Judah, then who is this tribe of Judah that scattered out to the four corners of the earth? Can you pinpoint us? No, I, I didn't see. See, see. No, I didn't I mean, see what you just said. I, oh, okay, that ain't right. what you said. Well, I'm asking right. to anybody what I'm on the panel. This is what I'm saying. Is this is this is what I'm saying? So everybody can hear me clearly. The, if the what we see today as black americans the uh some of black americans that did come over on ships some of them were slaves which was israelites and also some of them were slave owners and they was they was they got israelite descent and also blood wise as being israelites now the but the majority of those people that we see was what we call west africans who were who were who were taken uh, uh, into slavery just as well too? I wouldn't say that like most uh, most Israelite brothers to say, oh, around eighty to ninety percent of these brothers was uh, was was Israelites. You know what I'm saying? Nah. If, if I see that I, if I come to West Africa and I see that these people uh, and some people in West Africa are more so, I wouldn't say primitive, but more so they're not uh, in, on a level of high tech uh, civilizations. And I can see if I can take advantage of them and get slave labor, and I was a cruel lord. Of course, I'm gonna come to the West because they had already came to. The, they are the, when you look at the Northeast of three people that's been divided. It's been I mean Africa. It's been divided by Christians, supposed Christians. It's been divided by Jews, and also it's been divided by Islam or Muslims. You know what I'm saying, and they've been fighting over that area for a long time. And when you look at the Jews, it's more more so Judeo Christianity. Or it's more so just straight, strict Judaism. You know what I'm saying? Whatever the case may be. And then you have Islam that's taking over the, the whole part of Northeast Africa, which they're going to push west. Why not? Because you're going into the New World. Why not bring these servants into the New World? They don't have guns. What they going to do? What you going to do with me? And then when you look at an Israelite, if you look at an Israel, a black Israelite, if they with them, they know how to speak the language. They know the culture. Why not use them? To the, 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 the look just like the Negroes or Negro land and take them. And that's what I see that happen when you look at the history. Because when you look at the history, the white people that are talking and the Arabs that are talking about the history of Africans, they said that it was black Jews that was with them and 
the Negroes or Africans hated them. They said that they was numerous, and they said that they was also wealthy in the land of in, in the land of uh, of Africa. And these are some of them are slave masters. So some of those black Hebrew Israelites you see today, their asses to go back, which are Israelites, whatever, they were slave masters. And and and, and that's what they don't want to talk about. So well, so uh, let me let me ask you a question. Yeah, go, okay? go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Let, me ask, let me ask you two questions real quick. Okay, you ready? All right. All right. The first question yes, is: sir. You had made a reference into the um, the Arabs that came into Africa, making references to Black Jews, right? Yes. Was this in uh, Saharan Africa or Sub-Saharan Africa? Wait, hold on. Somebody's playing something. Somebody mute their mic. Somebody playing something on the background. Yeah. Somebody mute their mic. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Gcom. You said was it in what uh was it in africa what you said yeah, was so the references africa, you was mentioned is is it in was it in saharan africa sub-saharan africa or was it in the sahel region which consisted of both uh i think it's consistent of both really you know what i'm saying because when you look at some of the people just talking about when they well uh well i would say because because you, you see uh north uh um north you see some uh, europeans to talk about it and also north africa too just as well and then some of uh, West African. Okay, so because it was but Jews, you don't know, you don't know off the top of your head, you can't cite who the Arab traveler, historian, cartographer was, and what the specific locale was. Correct? You can't quote it right now, right? Yeah, I can't quote it right now, but I did a response uh -huh. to it because one of the brothers that brought it out. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what's his name? Um, what's the brother's name? Uh, uh, Rob Bourne. Rob Bourne, basically. You know, brought some information out to send me a couple of books that I was reading, and uh, he talks about most of the people that just wrote about um, West African uh, uh, and also uh, Sub-Saharan African uh, Jews is, is mainly. Yeah, uh, I have those uh, books. Europe I'll send them to you if you African. want. I got those same books. I give them to you. So that's the first question I wanted to ask, right? Because if you go to Christian Oldendorf, he has a reference to Black Jews in the Luango Kingdom, and uh, those black Jews did practices that were separate from the indigenous people that were there. Because, you know, the Billy peoples are the ones that had the kingdom of Luango. And Luango Coast is one of the major slave trading posts, right? So you're familiar with that history, correct? Yeah, and, uh, and like I said, I, I, I don't totally disagree that there was uh, West African Jews. That's not No, my, but I'm saying, I'm saying those purpose, Jews, but... those Jews had nothing to do with the ones that you're talking about that's coming from the um, you know Iberian Peninsula. These are two totally separate groups, and and he's getting his information because you know he was part of the Moravian Brotherhood, and he went to the what we call today the U.S. Virgin Islands. And every account he got of Africa, he got from the actual slaves that lived there. They're the ones that relayed this information over to him, and that's why Scholar says today says that almost eighty percent of his book is accurate because he's getting it from people that live on those coasts of Africa that was taken over there to the um, the uh, Virgin Islands region, right? So there were black Jews that were there that have nothing to do with the Jews that you're mentioning that was involved in this transatlantic slave trade. They have nothing to do with them. If you study the Vili peoples and learn what their raiding tactics were, as well as their slave raiding and their tactics in regards to how they sourced individuals, they took them from foreigners first. They also took them from prisoners or people who committed crimes and then they also had battles in the hinterland and took pow's and they're the ones that traded them with the dutch and other groups that came much later in the 18th century right so that's the first so thing I would say about the early a, lot group, a lot of references from the arab historians the earliest ones come from saharan africa right so that's the first thing i just want to put out the second thing is you you made a great point with the autosomal uh mutations which is interesting and i think we can unpack a little bit more if we have time maybe you mean you should do a dialogue on that and go into that a little further but the question i have for you is have you seen the actual dna analysis of ramsey the third because you know he's e1b1a have you seen what those subclads are of mutation no i just know he was e1b1a uh so how was, was the that, e1b1a uh, yeah, they say he's a Negro. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, I'm asking G Con a question. How is he? Oh, my fault, man. I'm talking about one A. Uh, most likely, most likely through his father, probably most likely through that. Kid. And his father? Uh, what so was his what father? I'm, what I'm saying uh, is, E1 being E1 being a flow, that gene flow, wasn't just in Kemet. It's this also. Uh, we components of it we have from DNA analysis of people who are still in the land that do still have E1B1A. 
So what right, I'm saying is this. There's a small gene flow, though. There, there's, it's a gene flow. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying it's the consensus gene flow, right? What I'm saying is that gene flow has been there for a long time. Even if you go back to the right. Tupians with just regular E1, B1, but then there are different, I would say, clad than what we find in other populations of Sub-Saharan West Africa, right? But the point I'm trying to make is that there were all types of flows that happened there during that time. Our current flows that we have, especially if you talk about autosomal, that can only go back, but I think about a thousand years, the most, right? In regards to mutations, we have not extracted any ADNA from any Petra's bone from any known skeletal remains of Israelites. We have not done that. The brother DeMarco, he even attested to this because if you read any of those art, for example, I want to bring this article up. The latest article that people are using to try and disprove Israelites is one that talks about these uh, myriad of different sites that they got, sites in the Jordan, sites in Lebanon, sites in the Judean Desert and Negev. And what they did was they extracted a DNA from these individuals and they took their studies from a previous article and used that data. And what they were trying to find out was what is the relationship between those ancient peoples and the people that still live there? They were able to conclude that some of the people that still live there, guess what, show affinities to the people that that were there prior to them, right? That they've exhumed. The issue is when it goes to looking at the so-called Jewish groups, they said that they have 50% DNA that seems to have an affinity towards the exhumation of those skeletal remains that they extracted the DNA from. However, they said this does not prove that they are oftenest to those regions. It's in the article. It says that. It just says that at some point in their history, there was some kind of mingling that brought that DNA down to them because it's 50% or less, meaning that these are admixed people. They're, all of them are not indigenous to that right, area. Right. And, so, and so see what you just said, and, and see what you just said, that's important what you just said, because remember I said shared genetic information. Correct. Correct, to, correct. Uh, geographical locations that we correct. see and so the reason why that's important because you just talked about uh you when you said you, you said something about uh the um the gene flow right correct. so uh uh the the origin of e1b1a comes out of africa and so when you say there's a three to five percent gene flow that comes out of africa right then you see that that three to five genes uh, 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 uh gene flow that we see is in the levant area Right. And so you see that from there, uh, from from you see, you see that from there, we see that there um, that we see certain groups that is in those areas. Like when you look at E1B1B, E1B1B, we know he's been almost a lot of places. They say the origin of that may be out of Africa or either out of uh, the uh, the uh, uh, well, I would say Asia in those areas. And so when you look at the subclass that comes the subclass of all these E1B1As that we see that we see the subclasses in Africa, these are origin in Africa. So when you look at markers, if you're saying you're Israelite, those shared con connections that you just got through talking about, you would have picked up that that autosomal DNA. You would have had a mutations and shared genetic information with those people. And that's what I'm saying when I say it's not really about uh like when you said about Ramesses the third e one b when a the uh what's called because we see that uh there's these people are a mixture in in uh the levant area and uh, was also mixing with the people that was in Kemet as we see already because they ruled all the way up to those areas and so these are so all there was migration people. there was migrations of e1b1a in northeast africa we we find right. it in various places now i'm not saying and I can't say that's the consensus from all the DNA analysis of ADNA that we found. Obviously, that's not the consensus. Even in Kemet, it's not the consensus, right? What I'm simply saying is if we don't have a template to measure against, because they have not extracted ADNA for us to see what those changes are in the subclabs, we cannot definitely measure it against us here in America or those in people in West Africa. We don't we don't have it. The evidence is not there. We're looking at surrounding evidence of other groups that came from and they mentioned this from the Georgia Steeps, right? From from Iran and Georgia Steeps that right. migrated and mingled in there. Then you also have people on the coastal plains that came from the Aegean Sea region. Then you have flows from E one B one B that comes from the Horn of Africa into Yemen, up north into Arabia, and then mix in and Canaan. Canaan was an area people was going in and out all the time. In and out all right. the time. You had right. so you can pick up those migrations. Correct. You can pick up those migrations. So and so, if you saying if your ancestors are you saying that that you are uh, um, that you're 
that you are a, you are an Israelite. That group, according to biblically, we got to look at biblically, would have mm -hmm. started right there. Right there that we see of that group uh, uh, in uh, in uh, around or in the area of upper around in those areas right there of what we call upper Mesopotamia. Well, then you uh, also had Canaanite admixture. You had Canaanite admixture. You had Egyptian admixture. You had right, and that's the admixture. thing. And, that, and that's the thing. And that's what I'm saying. So with that admixture, all the summary, you could actually trace that. Like for instance, so wait, wait. You, so you can, can order. You, wait, you can autosomally trace your autosomal DNA back to a DNA. That's what you tell me. You could trace it back that you far. You can tell that you, you, yeah, you. What you can tell is that you have come in contact with someone that your ancestor came in contact with someone that was in those areas. Why? Because up, up, up until how up far back? Like for instance, up, up until how let me far give you an back? Example. How Hold far on, back? Let me give you an Okay, okay it depends on what mute it depends it, it, it really it depends on what mutation did it is all right because a certain mutations that we see that sprung up out of those areas they carry along and they pick up on people's alleles or their uh, uh their pairs their chromosomes and so you're going to pick up that mutation it's going to be passed down and so you can look at some of these things that go into people's families has been passed down. but let me give you an example of, of, of one of the things we see we can look at today yeah, yeah, for yeah. instance with the coronavirus now with the coronavirus if, if let's say for instance, we didn't have transportation like we had today, if we didn't have right. transportation like we had today, the coronavirus would never spread it as rapidly as it did. Right. But what we can do is biologically, we can locate where the coronavirus would have started from uh, uh, due to the spread of it and, and how many people that was in that vicinity that got it and, 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 and also it's spreading. Now, back in the ancient times, you can look, you can look, you can look and say, uh, something happened because the genome of these people changed during this time. It's not the, the frequency is not the same. Correct. So There's a shift in frequency. It, you, Correct. Exactly. And so when you look at that, you say you what you supposed to say? Uh, uh, it's hitting the two hour oh, mark. We're gonna have, I want everybody to get uh, the closing words out because we got to wrap it up because I got another preliminary I got to do here in about an hour. Okay. And bringing and bringing that that information, but I would love to build with you individually because I have some articles that we can unpack and take a look at further. Okay. okay. So so uh, Demarco, can we get uh, can uh, can we get a debate out of you and uh, Divine? I mean, yeah. we can we can bring it to the den. What's going on? No, I I don't want to I don't want to debate you, brother, because we haven't we didn't do a one on one discussion yet. Okay, a lot do, do a one on one yeah. first. Okay, yeah. we'll come. So, so y'all come back and do that first. No, no, no. Listen, listen. This is what I'm saying. When it comes to a debate, I need yeah. somebody that's diametrically opposed with the methodology that I use to prove my point. Got He's it. not. He concedes right. to legit evidence. If the evidence is there, the brother concedes to it, and then we both have to unpack it and analyze it. So it will be more of a build. It's not really going to be a okay, okay. All right. we can, We'll build. We'll call it. Everything yeah. got to be a debate, everybody. But, now, but I found you, you a Christian apologist earlier, but, you know, we ain't going what, to. What, what I would like to the discussion on is how do we identify what is African spirituality? Yeah, ooh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. They don't want to answer that. So they don't I, want to answer that. No, no, I, I'm saying I, I, it's hard to find somebody that's willing to defend traditional African spirituality as right. well as African culture. I'll give you an example, right? I have a lot of brothers, Look, associates, not only like blood brothers, but like brothers, people who I call my friends, associates that are, are initiated in Ifa, right? Some of them even have, not even all of them, it's to me, it's, I see it as cultural misappropriation. Let's say if you're Wolof and you decide to practice Ifa, your ancestors had their own spiritual system. But right. you are not in the spiritual system of another group. But you entitled to do that, right? They'll say it's all African, so but they saw distinctions amongst themselves, right? And we even have that from their own records. But let's say a brother or sister is from the Yoruba tribe, right? They say they're from the Yoruba tribe, right? And say, yeah, I'm gonna support Ifa because this is the tradition and the culture and the spirituality of my ancestors. I have no problem with that. The issue I have is, will you be willing to defend that the Thanks. way I have to defend? my position as far as being an Israelite, number one. And number two, would you be willing to sanction the right. practices that was done by the Oyo Empire? Because that's where a lot of people are. That's right. Them and guys the don't want to do that. Empire, listen, listen. The Oyo Empire were imperialists, <laughs> right? Which means they did a lot of things. They did human sacrifice, right? They, they took women from the indigenous men and they used that's them for right. themselves. We, I got tons of articles and books written by Yoruba scholars <laughs> that have taken and construct, reconstructed their history of the 
uh, or your empire and the Yoruba peoples. But then you also have white academia that has books and references on them as well. Do they be willing to defend human sacrifice? That's right. Or do they be willing to defend the imperialism performed by the Oya Empire on smaller groups within the empire that they took over and they ravaged their towns and they did all types of stuff? Will you be willing to defend yeah. that culture? See, yeah. when I talk about culture, I'm honest. I say, look, every culture has ups and downs, good and bad. You know, they, they did a variety of different things. In the, in the Bible, it's recorded good and bad things. The Bible is indifferent. It's good and bad things. But the same atrocities that people can see in the Bible, I could find in any culture, in Africa, right. Asia, and Europe, and the ancient Near East. There's all types of atrocities done by people that today we won't see. But them, they didn't think like that. So we have to put things in this historical context and understand the ancient world based on how the culture saw it and not how we feel today. We're very sensitive today about things extremely sensitive and that's the problem when brothers ask questions they come from a very sensitive and soft spot and i just want to have a conversation if you're going to talk about israelite culture and you want to defend comedic culture african spirituality we got some brothers that don't even subscribe to african spirituality it's like yo i'm an atheist i don't even subscribe to that we got brothers in the conscious community that say oh that was spooky in west africa but those are your ancestors why would you and, say and, about your ancestors like that defend your ancestors that's Why right get them ron getting into science yeah. bro? Science and what's called religion was intertwined in those cultures. They didn't really parse them out and make distinctions like the way it's categorized in Western academia. The way they deal with things is different. I even made an example of the oral tradition. For example, Shango. You can't prove that Shango was a real person. You can't prove that he was a real person. But if you ask the locals that, they'll tell you he was a real person. He existed. He was an actual king that was there. But academia will say, no, that's oral tradition. That's myth. That's not true. They believe oh, he was a unified ancestor, which means that he died. They say he committed suicide. Some people he committed suicide. Some people don't say the locals killed him. There's various myths on that. But he resurrected and became a deified ancestor. So if he became a deified ancestor, and this is what the Yoruba believe, if another culture talks about a deified ancestor, like a Jesus character, something like that, how could that be strange when that's something that is believed in other cultures? And Yoruba is not the only culture that believe in deified ancestors or ancestors who were killed and they resurrected. If you look in the Barris Alusi in the Igbo culture, they believe some of those ancestors resurrected. That's right. They believe see, in that. See, see, up. The Bible or anything like that. Hey, hey, Ron, you on fire right now, man. See, this is what I've been asking these guys. They always want to point your finger. Oh, oh, let, let, me, let, me, let me do something real quick, man. Hold up. Anybody Hold wants up. any references to what I'm saying as we're talking? Kyle, let me know what I'm saying. Kyle, he used to be my co-star on, on, on this show. Oh, that's my brother. Me and Kyle. Yeah, cool. yeah, I see him peeking around. I got the link. You want to jump on anytime, brother. You, you yeah, welcome so. back home. But anyway, hold on. Let me see something. See, these guys, what they want to do, man, they always want to attack our book. But the minute with JJ7000, going to do some research on them and, and bring out like Ula Dude Marie. Now, see, Ula Dude Marie used to, the, the legend of Ula Dude Marie is that he was a guy, a guy that came down and slept with the Yoruba men. See, Kyle don't want to hear about this. Slept with the Yoruba men. He gave, he, they said in the legend, he gave all that they needed. So one day the women ran up on him and they scared him away. And when they scared him away, the men blamed the women for separating them from God. So, JJ, when you say stuff like that, you got to produce a source, right? Oh, okay. I, I have produced that before, but you know what? People who are defending that culture will find that offensive. Hey, I, 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 I'll tell you what. Let me, let me, I'm, I'm going to look it up right now. I'm going right, to bring it to you right now. Because that and, and is I, one of the creation stories. I, I, I did a video on this. I brought it out before. But you're right. For me, that's I, time. I'm only saying that because what I try to do is I try to be fair. I'm not trying to be one of these extremists in any of these communities. What I'm simply doing is when I do objective research and I examine cultures, cultures have good and bad, cultures develop, cultures expand, cultures shrink, right? For example, in Igbo culture, they didn't have a king. A king in their mindset was foreign. They had a more of a village democratic where the elders would come to figure out issues and go back to their separate communities, right? They didn't subscribe to a king. When the Arutchuku peoples came, so the Aru peoples came into that region, they shifted things. They're the ones that got heavily involved in a slave trade. The Enri kingdom was a little bit different because they still even didn't believe in kings. That kingship idea was something that was foreign in antiquity to the Igbo peoples, right? But what I'm saying is you have to examine a culture for what it is. You cannot put your own personal beliefs and your own presuppositions and your own feelings on ancient cultures or indigenous cultures. Objectify them, meaning that study them as they are, accept what they say, 
accept what the science says, and then move on. You don't have to use that to bang on another culture. This is why I don't need to bang on Kemet. This is why but I don't they, need to bang on West African. But, but, but they bang on us so much, uh, Devon. They bang on us so much. No, 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 no. You know why? They bang because we also bang on them. We have this religion mentality like my culture is better than yours, and that is unfair. We have to showcase the good and bad in all cultures and say, why do you choose this culture to identify with? Do you are you genetically connected to them? Is there an affinity that you have towards them? Is there a conviction you got when you study their culture? Just ask them. And if so, what are the good of the culture? What is the bad? And how can you take that, put it into contemporized American culture so we can use it as tools to build our community? If you can use Israelite culture to do that, salute to you. If you can use comedic culture to do that, salute to you. If you can use West African culture to do that, salute to you. But don't become religious and do the gangbang thing because then you're not conscious. You identify the culture, say these are the good and bad, this is why I identify with it, and let's build together to learn about these cultures. I'm gonna hold my conviction, stand on my square, you hold your conviction, stand on your square, and with the disagreement, you learn, we teach, we share, we become students. That is how you grow. But when you have a gang banging mentality because you hate, you have a hatred for something, academia don't deal with hatred. Only we do in this sensitive community, we deal with that. They don't deal with that. When they write about cultures, they don't talk about, oh, I hate these cultures, so I'm going to write this and say this about them, and they're not this, and they're not that. They don't even do that. Even black scholars who are worth their weight in their name and academia, this is how they rock. We have to come out that mentality in this community. I know this might be popular because some of our people want a gangbang. That's fine. I'm just saying in order for us to, I would say, diplomatically share content so that the viewing audience can grow, not only do we have to have those sources, we have to explain what our conviction is, what I'm willing to defend, and why. Don't 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 have a conviction and don't put it on public display because you don't want to scrutinize, but you're willing to put mine on there. Those are not the, the debates that I want. Those are not the conversations that I want to have because it's unfair. It's one way and it's interrogative. That's not fair. Right. So let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say something real quick. Now, okay, you know what? Since I don't have my source with me, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that back. But I, I can't there find it go. right now. There so, you so, go. So that, that's what I'm going to do. But when I, because Kyle kind of got mad at me. That's my brother. I want him to come on. Uh, uh, Divine, can you send him the link real quick in the back in his back chat so he can come on? You got the link in your on your phone, don't you? Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so, I, okay, I'm going to take that back until I, next time I come on here, I'm going to have that, I'm going to have that short. But here's the thing. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Oh, let me? Let me get it on everybody. Here's the thing. Yeah, speaking I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was muted. Yeah, that's I said, yes, we can hear you. But here's the thing. Like 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 Ron said, y'all don't ever want to defend nothing. Why 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 we always gotta defend our book? And then when we, we ask y'all, well, what y'all what y'all what y'all saw the foundation? Oh, I don't believe in nothing. I'm, I'm an atheist. Well, if you're an atheist, then get guess what? You got that from the white man because over in Africa, they all most of all these tribes they have a creator God, a creator story, an all knowing and all seeing God that they have in in in, in their in their uh, history or in in, in, their, in their in their in their oral traditions or their stories. There is no one over there talking about we came from we evolved into to uh, from 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 uh from one species to another. I don't ever see none of that in, in their stories. It's always some, uh, if, 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 even if, what's that, if, I, if, if they if, if they take, what, 250 other smaller deities to get to the top one? And, and all, all throughout these other cultures, they have a creator God. So y'all need to stop with the bullshit. Oh, wait, so look, 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 Jeremiah, that's what I'm gonna do for you. Next time you speak on that, what you have to do is you have to get, like, if you're talking about Ifa. You have yeah. to get testimony from a Baba, a Baba Lao and Ifa. Because I know several Baba Laos that tell me that Western academia does not understand West African culture. I have a paper actually written by one. And okay. what they say is that the problem is they don't parse out or separate science and what's called religion. Culture oh. and science is one and the same in West Africa. But what, what, academia does, what academia does, they split it down the middle and they use it to bang one on the other. And that and, is and, not how you think from an African mind. And think, hold up, hold up, because we got these new age brothers over here who wants to separate the African spirituality from the science. They are out here teaching that we only need science. Isabio is one of the main components of, of teaching this. He's, I'm going to bring him back on. I'm going to bring him back on. He said that we need to get rid of the religion, get rid of the spirituality, and only deal with science and mathematics. And in ancient, and even in, in Kemet, they didn't separate the spirit. They were, we no, are spiritual people. No, they Here we go. Not. 
It was all one and the same. Because if you go to any of the medical treatises, you could pick the Ebers, Pappers, anything. Guess what? They also speak about the Netaru in there and that you have to consult the Netaru for certain healings because certain things they just could not do for themselves. Now, again, in their mind, they use their spiritual system with observation, empirical data in regards to doing medical procedures. They were one of the pioneers in this, right? And we have to give credit for that. But again, they did not separate the two. They were one in the same. And that's the problem when people try to separate and then have them bang on each other, it becomes a problem. So that's why when I deal with Israelite culture, I deal with the science and I deal with the culture. I, I look at both things and then I say, okay, how can it be harmonized? How is, how is it not harmonized? And then how can we explain it? What do we do with this information? Do we disregard it? Do we use it? How, how, how do we handle it? And that's, I think that that's the most responsible thing we can do when we come across these ancient or indigenous cultures is if there's something in it that could be utilized for African Americans to liberate us out of the condition that we're in right now, I think we should use it. That's my position. All right. So, <coughs> excuse me. We're going to so go I'm ahead a, and wrap it up. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I don't think Kyle is. Okay. Kyle, you can come back on next time. We can, we can do this. We can maybe. Twice, twice a month, you know, we can all get on here and build like this because I, I enjoyed this. You know, everything ain't got to be a debate. I mean, we are a debate league over here, but the Lions then was a Lions then before it became a Lions in debate league. You JJ, see what I'm saying? It's a debate when it's a one on one, right? But when it's like right. this, it's a group build. You feel me? Hey, 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 I, you know, you know who I blame for uh, creating this monster? I, I, I blame Garfield and, 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 and Ron Sh and Div Divine Prospect. Cause they, you know, saying the very first time I went live, I mean that, that Garfield was calling me out. We'd already go at it on on on, uh, on keyboard. He said, "Go live, Judah. Go live, Jeremiah." I, said, you know what? Forget. It. I went live, and the very first time I went live, Garfield took too long, and Ron came on there. Me and Ron, we yeah, had a good because, meal. Because, because you was calling me out, so Kyle was on that one too, and right. I was like, "Who is this guy, man?" I said, like, "All right, let's talk." So we, we went, we built, and everything has been kosher since then. You feel me? Hold up. So yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna head out, man. I'm gonna head out um, because we're like way overboard. Yeah, so yeah, yeah we, we are. We'll probably set another one up later on this week if y'all want. Yeah, and we'll do that, Kyle. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure Kyle sure. get the uh, the link. Anybody want to hear closing words? Um, so all I want to say, because I'm out to run, all I want to say is I'm glad Demarco came on. Um, I mean Matt and um and, uh, Black Jesus Minister mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. G Con and I forgot the other brother who you, who's up there now. Who was given in the, the one dude that called me soft? Yeah, the dude that called me soft. Um, oh, we, no, who called you soft? No, I ain't hear yeah, that. He called me soft. He said, he said, I'm deflecting and, and I'm soft. But what I'm saying is, I, I'm glad they came on as well to give their feedback and input so we can build and edify. I do want to talk to DeMarco 101 because I believe that that brother, he's sincere and he's willing to concede to information that could be proven. You know what I'm saying? And I like building with people like that because they don't have an agenda. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like they really sincerely have seen both sides. And right. I can tell he's research when I on my side. So I can't knock the brother for that. Like, yeah, and he's doing that. You know what 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 I mean? Well, you know you're missing. JJ been pseudo ever since. Um, <laughs> um, so I just want to thank you, JJ, okay, for, you. for inviting me on the panel today. Like I said, I was not trying to devote any time to this, but being that DeMarco was saying what he was saying, I was like, okay, let me build with the brother real quick. We had a great build. We got to build yeah. offline, and I'm 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 willing to come back on. So I appreciate it, JJ, and and shout out, man. Shout out, man. Shout out, man.